Niners! <laughs> hey, before I do anything else, shout out to Norm Niners all day. Norm is going to have a little one in November. Congratulations, Norm. I saw that photo. Hit like. <laughs> Daddy Norm. Anyway, fam, here's the thing. I, I, like you, I am tired of talking about Jimmy G, but he keeps making the top headlines like he does each and every offseason, even though you never see or hear a word from him the entire time. <laughs> it's true. Jimmy's in old body, his old business, or he's sitting in a Hooters having a burger. <laughs> and, and, and people are talking about him all over the place. Anyway, Frank Gore shockingly favors Jimmy G for 2022. Sort of knocked me off my chair when I'm reading. What? Frank, you're the guy who's told Jed he should draft <laughs> Trey Lance. And now all of a sudden you're an advocate of Jimmy? I'm shocked. Anyway, fam, here's the thing. As a Niners fan, the old adage of nothing in life is certain other than death and taxes falls short of the whole experience of, of being a 49er fan, now doesn't it? <laughs> a correction. A correction would have to be applied would be that nothing in life is certain other than death, taxes, and a constant, and I mean never-ending, Niners QB controversy each and every year. And this goes back a long way with a year here and there without there being some issue about who's going to be the quarterback. Just a few. You can't count the times it was, but you can count the one. Yeah, you know. But all of fame bound and former Niners running back Frank Gore boldly predicts the 49ers versus Bill Super Bowl 57. I like that, though. Yeah. However, Gore surprisingly uh, doesn't think Trey Lance should be the quarterback uh, on the biggest game of the year, at least not yet. Uh, tonight, after going over the specifics of Niner Hall of Fame running back Frank Gore's bold predictions uh, of the Niners versus Bills Super Bowl 57, we're going to the phones for your thoughts. And if you've got any bold predictions, I think just do those too. I predict, my bold prediction is that for the next three to four years, we don't have any more quarterback controversies, and, and we don't even have to talk about it in the offseason. <laughs> that, well, that's as bold as it gets. <laughs> but betting site Bovada took to Twitter to ask fans, make your bold sports predictions. So Frankie Gore saw that, and he stepped right up, offered his response, and the uh, Frankie said he predicted that Super Bowl 57 will feature the Niners and the Bills, two teams for which Gore played during – uh, his illustrious 16 years of football. Uh, the Niners are coming off an NFC Championship game appearance. They're second in three years. The Bills fell 42-36 to to the Kansas City Chiefs in a divisional playoff game overtime thriller, which, of course, has, has spurred legislation to make sure that if the game is played, uh, that the ending will be done or the, the last few minutes will be done in a different fashion. Naturally, though, Buffalo was expected to be one of the teams to beat in an extremely, and I'm talking extremely scary, AFC. Uh, the Niners roster is also loaded with talent, but the team is transitioning at, at quarterback from Jimmy Garoppolo to Trey Lance. Uh, Gore's prediction says much about his confidence in the team and the coaching staff, considering that he previously expressed more confidence in Garoppolo over Lance, which I was, what? Really? Frank, you're, you're with the minority, the small minority, are you? And then I read further and it said, Frank said in April, quote, every time he's out there, they win. I've said that myself, but I got ignored. Uh, he goes on to say it might not look good, but they win. I know the business of it. They gave up three first round picks for Lance. So eventually he does uh, got to come out in and play. Okay. But if the Niners... If I can't get a if oh but if I'm the Niners if I can't get a second round draft pick or higher for Jimmy I probably have to keep him. We've heard something like that from the Niners, haven't we? <laughs> he went to the playoffs. He's been in the league for a while, so he understands the offense. He's smart. Right now, I would say Jimmy gives the 49ers the best chance to win. Unquote. 
Now, on another occasion, Frankie G noted that Lance looks to have the talent to be a, a, a capable quarterback, saying, quote, I just think he needs more reps. And when he was playing in preseason, I saw that he was doing some good things. Uh, I just think that I just think when he took the the time off and they let Jimmy G be the guy, uh, then when Jimmy G got hurt, you could tell he kind of went backwards a little bit. But he doesn't have. T- but he does have talent. I think he needs the reps. I think once Kyle knows what he's really good at, because Kyle is one of the greatest play callers in the league right now, uh, in spite of what Power Fitness says. <laughs> he goes on to say, I think Kyle will figure it out. Uh, a way for him to have success, unquote. All right. So what do we have to say about all of that from Frankie G? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't wait till season starts so we can stop having these particular type of conversations. But this is nothing 49ers related, really. I mean, we, we've already talked about everything else. I've tried my best to avoid this subject because it's annoying. But here we go again. <laughs> oh God! I mean, hey, hey, fly guy, <laughs> Rumble, <laughs> fly guy, Frank Gore on Twitter. Vegas said, make some bold predictions, and Frankie said, 49ers versus Bills." And then he went on to say, "Look, uh, you know, I like Trey, but he." he really ready yet, pretty much what it boiled down to. But like, I, you know, uh, this is getting to be a thing. The conversation is going round and round. You got any bold predictions tonight? What do you think about what Frankie said? He has a, a point because I've been said it already. I'm like, why would you want to cut a quarterback that you almost like a few plays away from winning it all? Like, and he proven the next year, I mean, the year after next year, whatever, they went back to the championship game. So he's proven he can win. So why you want to just go down here like Kyle Fukasha and cutting Jimmy G and going with Lance fully? You don't know what's going to happen. It's like you just bought a brand new car and you don't know how it's going to ride. You don't know what's going to happen. So it's like you want to you want a little bit of comfort zone to be like, you know what, I might just keep Jimmy G too. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And just go in the season and pick who's I think – will still go the furthest. And he, and then keep Jimmy on standby no matter what. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. fly guy. To me, that's what it looks like. Everybody said, well, this is the reason why they can't get rid of him, and this is the reason why they can't get rid of him. They're going to cut him before the season starts. You know, I, they could have got rid of Jimmy a long time ago. I don't understand Man, this. The, you've been saying it for a long time. Uh, I, when um, Before Jimmy G came to the 49ers, we was like, ass. So now we got swag. So why would you want to just, just cut something and just cut it and you don't know what's going to happen? Just because Lance got talent, they don't mean he's going to win the games. So that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Jimmy know, G is still like the option to to go the whole way this year with George Kittle, more weapon, more defense. They're going to buy more stuff, not just Jimmy G. That's what they don't understand. And Jimmy doesn't complain. He doesn't say anything. The 49ers have to be wondering why Jimmy isn't at least complaining about the fact that he's being dismissed after two out of three seasons, all the way to the front, right, knocking at the door, keeping the team what in I the say, mix. He doesn't say a word, though. Not a word. What I, say, what, what I say we do is to keep Jimmy G, convince him to get a pay, a pay cut, Mm. Not a lot, but something like a mm. little bit something. Make make it workable. Keep him, yeah. yeah, keep him, and then let him start. And we're gonna judge him. They're gonna judge him on the first four games, four or five games, and then Lance will take the whole season over from that from that from that point. If Jimmy G can can show us that he can go, can win within the five Continue games, winning. Yeah. at least four and one, then we like okay, you know what, we moving on, and we, you cut. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But still give him another try because every team is different, different year. Yeah. Uh, so, Jerry Rice says, let him compete. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I like that idea. Let him compete. Let the best man win. You know, because just bringing Jimmy back to be a backup, that's wrong. If you're going to do that, just cut him. He doesn't need to stand back there at the clipboard. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's actually an insult to him. 
I'm not, I mean, I mean, yeah. when I came here, these guys weren't winning. Last two out of three years, we've been there and almost done it. You know, and this happens to a lot of quarterbacks. Jimmy ain't the only person that loses in the Super Bowl and in the playoffs. He's not. And that's where I always say, you know, how many guys get to that point and they end up not winning? It takes a few times. It doesn't always happen the first time. And uh, so that's what I'm saying. Jimmy says, you know what, bleep this. You let me go then. I think that's what he's thinking. Well, that's one thing the 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 Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch scared of is like Jimmy G is proven to win for them. So it's like if we let the person who went for us go and we don't even know what's going to happen with Lynch, how are we going to look? Let's say this season is a disaster. How are they going to look, Rumble? Oh, man, that's a scary thought. You know, there's going to be a lot of, ooh, there's going to be a lot of nasty conversation. Yeah. If we ain't, boy, ooh. Seven, seven and whatever, seven and, let's go seven and uh, 11, whatever, 11, oh, and then we don't make the playoff. And God, then we, the season Christ. is like a disaster. The whole front office would be in, in trouble. This is what people don't understand. The 49ers, ain't nobody going to be stand. This, you know, the people will hate Jimmy. They don't mind if we go 7-11 because they'll say, well, you know, it's the first year. Uh, we'll be okay. Uh, the fact of the matter is the 49ers cannot afford. These guys, we don't have a lot of young guys that are uh, veterans are, are that young. They don't have a year to just donate to a, a, a rookie quarterback. So I don't know. I can't imagine how bad that would be if we went seven eleven. Ooh, that would. Ooh, that. Mm, oh. That's why I say we. I mean, we came so close to to win win it all, both two years in a row. Yeah. So it's like it gotta be the third year. Gotta be it. You feel me? So you don't want to cut the person yet. That's that's how I feel about it. Like we came so close twice with Jimmy G when when he was here the whole <clears throat> season. Even in the playoff, he was like bruised up, but he still played. But we got, we got far. But I would not just cut someone and you just go with a new guy. I would, I would just like transition him in slowly to see what he can do. While Jimmy G is there, give him more playing time, more playing time. Test him out. You feel me? Give him a whole game here, whole game here, and then test him out. Test him out. Mm-hmm. We don't know what Len's going to do. He only played two games. Yeah, because also if you're gonna go by, well, he didn't, he didn't win the big game. Well, you got to you got to get rid of uh, Aaron Rodgers. He's got to go. He has he's lost the big game how many times? You got to rid of Russell Wilson. He's lost a number of times too. You got to get rid of Drew Brees. Drew Brees already quit. He just said, <laughs> "Damn that." Josh Allen lost last year. He's supposed to be great, you know. Uh, you also the man over in Kansas City lost last time. You can't win every year. Now your time may come, but. To judge a quarterback after having lost, unless, getting that far in the playoffs, that's a little that's a little rich. Unless unless you Tom Brady, you can win a few years. <laughs> yeah, but Tom's won so many times. Yeah, you you, yeah. you know that's too many times to win. Yeah, unless you Tom Brady, then you can win because he's a smart quarterback. I've been saying he's smart. Yeah, it's, the game is about using your brain, not just talent. Right now, he don't have the talent to run. He don't need to run because he has a brain. People don't understand that. It's like, it's not just talent. It's a brain. That's why I say Jimmy G might be a winner, even though he's not talented, but Lynch might be a bust, <laughs> yeah. even if he's even talented. Even though he is talented. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just based on how you approach the game, how you look oh, yeah. at the game. There's a lot of talented, a lot of talented quarterbacks that, that don't come up short. Like Jimmy Bull says, Brady. I mean, Aaron Rodgers never lost Super Bowl. He ain't been but to one out of his long career, but he he didn't lose it. <laughs> we can make all kind of jokes, but Rodgers is the perfect example of why sometimes you gotta be patient. You know. Yeah, yeah. you gotta be patient. So let I'm just let Jimmy just finish his contract. That's it. Yeah. Already got him that already. Devo, Devo can wait. Devo, even Devo, Devo gonna cry. He can wait. <laughs> yeah. not, Devo it, gonna be like, "What the hell going on?" <laughs> it, anyway, Jimmy just sitting on the street. <sighs> so if, like if Jimmy get could, cut today, Jimmy, I mean Devo get paid. So that's well, what Devo looking at too. Well, no, they, they've already made it clear that D, 
Jimmy Debo's pay does not depend on Jimmy. Jimmy hadn't got paid yet anyway. So if they want to pay Debo, they can pay him. They're not. Jimmy doesn't get paid. Shoot, if they're gonna pay him, he doesn't have to get paid till September. Debo needs Debo ain't waiting until September. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, anyway, fly guy. I'll uh, shoot. I'll be back midweek sometime. Yeah. The way my uh, world is doing. All right, fam. Good to hear from you again. I ain't heard for you in a couple yeah. of weeks. All right. Have a good night, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Edmund! Uh, What's going on, Rambo? Edmund, excitement, man, because you're back here on a Sunday. You know, I, I, as I told you last time, we talked, Edmund comes in, he, he waits a couple months and he gets on back in here, and I almost forgot who he was. And said, I might know it's Edmund! <laughs> Edmund! So Frankie Gore, and as 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 the Forty Nine Legends are all vol- volunteering information, has come forth and said that he thinks that uh, Trey needs more reps, uh, and his bold prediction is we're going to the Super Bowl. Edmund, what do you have to say about all these things? I mean, I'm fine with it. Obviously, competition is is is, is good, but like I said, I mean, either way, Rumble. I just think I think that. The general perception from fans, right, is that Lance is the missing piece that will put us over the top, Mm. right? Yep. And it goes back to what the media tells people, that if you have a quarterback, then that's what you need. You have to have that to win it all, right? Mm. But history has proven that to be untrue, Rambo. On a number of occasions. All right, look at Drew Brees. Yep. Drew Brees has one Super Bowl in how many seasons, right? Mm-hmm. Not just appearance. I mean, just, just appearance. Aaron Rodgers, same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Look, what's Aaron Rodgers' record in the NFC Championships? It's one in five, right? <laughs> now, how many of those was his fault? Now, they'll make excuses for him. But let's be honest. He hasn't played well in the NFC Championships. Hell, we've had one against him, and we saw how well he played, right? Well, we had two. Drew Brees, them. right? <laughs> Yeah, Drew Brees. Do well. Everybody talks about everybody talks about oh the catch, right? Remember the refs? Yeah, they didn't make the call. It was a bad call, Ron, but There's mm-hmm. no question. However, what nobody talked about is Todd Gurley, best running back in the league at the time, gets hurt second play of the game. You're up thirteen nothing against Jerry Goff at home in the NFC Championship. You lose that game. Why? Because Drew Brees goes seven to sixteen in the second half for sixty four yards and an interception. But we don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. What do we? What do we do? We say elite quarterback this, elite quarterback yep. that. No, yep. Yep. in the playoffs, all that changes. Look at Patrick Mahomes in the last AFC Championship. Yep. What happened to him? Mm-hmm. Twenty-one nothing lead. Tyreek Hill running around. They couldn't stop a bagel. Came out in the second half. Said we're shutting that crap down. Now let's see what you can do. What does he do? Last three quarters, three points. They lose the game at home. That was a gimme game. You have twenty-one nothing in the AFC Championship game at home. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a win. Mm-hmm. That's it's a, a, win, but it's, that, a, it's a Cleveland it's a Browns miss. too. What, what what happened? Yeah, you, you Patrick Mahomes. Because exactly. it wasn't that, all it, his fault. You can't it wasn't, spotlight and, just the quarterback on these games. Not that well, at that well, particular point. To go back to our Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes, everybody thinks Jimmy played a horrible Super Bowl. Go look. I challenge anybody. Go look at that game. Jimmy definitely played well enough to win. I'm not going to say he outplayed Mahomes, but I will say this. With six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs had seven points. All right? And we dropped two interceptions. We picked them off another two times. The offensive line held the entire game because the refs wanted them to. Like, mm-hmm. we act like Mahomes just, oh, he came out through six touchdowns, and we lost because we had Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. No. That, yeah. was, that, was, that was definitely not the case. We, we – as a team, we collapsed in that game. Defense, the defense, I think, they they were rushing so hard, right, every play. And then the fourth quarter came, we yeah, turned it over a couple times. That was all she wrote because they had no legs, and they were getting held. So, mm-hmm. you know, there was no bailout for them, right? Mm-hmm. So they were tired. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, okay, we could talk about the one throw that Jimmy made that Sanders made the piss poor effort on. But <laughs> – it never comes down to one play. The, the game is always lost in between the trenches, in between the quarters. It wasn't one play that lost us the game. And it wasn't just Jimmy who was the reason we lost. I'm not saying he's not to blame, but oh, yeah, elite blame. quarterback this and elite quarterback that. Look, mm-hmm. they got one ring. Now, 49er fans, they're in their emotions because they'll be like, we just want number six. Do you? Or do you want six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Now, 
Then there's the argument there where you say, oh, well, Lance will get us that. But how do we know that? We don't. So if he starts, fine. But here's what I know about Shanahan and Lynch. If they thought elite quarterbacks was a thing, they would have built the 49ers completely differently. Yes. Right? We would have a team like Josh Allen. Weapons all over the place. Mahomes, weapons all over the place. But they didn't. They said, no, we're going to build the team inside out from the line backwards, and then we'll place a quarterback there. Because it takes more than a quarterback to win a championship. Always So, Always in conclusion, is. no matter who starts, it's going to take the team anyway. Hell, we saw that in the NFC Championship game. Running game had 30 yards. Defense dropped probably the game-winning interception in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes to go, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You, it, it's all got to be flowing. You're not. You're not going to get there because your quarterback throws forty touchdowns. Because in the playoffs, he's not going to do that. Yes, that's the thing. Playoff football. I mean, that team you're playing, they're badasses too. So it's whoever flinches exactly. first is going to lose or win this game. That's the way it's going to be. And it's always the way it's going to be. Brady, yep. Bra- hey, Edmund, how many times? Brady has been saved how many times? The best quarterback of all time oh of, of carrying a team Bro. in the playoffs Don't is. Get me started. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's Joe. Joe makes no mistakes for some reason in the playoffs. No, he, didn't. he doesn't have to have a field goal kicker save him. Joe will go out there. Right. All he needs is one receiver, <laughs> and they'll beat your ass to death. But after Joe, exactly. I ain't seen nobody else do that. No, and, and I. The one game I always reference when it comes to all the Brady homers is the undefeated season. Because to me, it wasn't that he lost the game. It was that you scored 17 points. And at the time, they were a record-setting offense. But that just shows you, in the playoffs, it's different, right? It's different. So you come out, you score seven. And I got all the Tom Brady fans say, the defense lost their game. Because they gave up the game one and drive. Okay, so <laughs> what happened in the three quarters and a half before that when Brady only mustered two touchdowns? <laughs> Tell me, whose fault was that? Because nobody says the Patriots and then Brady. They say Brady and then the Patriots. So don't you can't double standard it. Either either he's the reason that they lost, or it's not the team's reason that they no. He did not have a good game. Go watch that game. He was being ghost. <laughs> straight hand and all those they were knocking him around all day long that's why they only scored 14 points that's why they lost that game in the fourth quarter yeah okay the defense gave up the game winning drive but at the end of the day if you're a record setting offense if you're scoring who were they scoring at the time rumble 33 34 points a game uh, and if you notice the week before the chargers had slowed them down the chargers kicked them off three times they had zero touchdowns but because Tomlinson and rivers were hurt that's why they lost but they already had shown the Giants, hey, here's the blueprint. Here's how you stop these guys. Take Moss away, cover the middle of the field, rush with four, take your chances. Yeah. Boom. There's, there's always that's, a defensive strategy. Football. Is it, Edmund, yeah. defenses win the championship games every single year. That's why you don't More talk about premier not. wide receivers after Jerry Rice winning in those championship games because they take them out. They always do. Yep. It's that, as I said, and if it's you that don't one take him out, if, yep. If Jerry Rice goes off for seven for two twenty, you lost that game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and every DC knows that. So you come in with the game yeah. plan is, all right, guys. Uh, we're, we're hoping to score at least fourteen to twenty-one points. But here's the story: we plan on shutting them down. And when teams work like, and that's yeah. Belichick's whole school. That's what he does. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it, it's just the, the spotlight changing the quarterback and and also to something else, Edmund. Hell, every quarterback ain't going to even get to the playoffs. Some great quarterbacks right. don't get to the playoffs every year. So it's gonna, like you said, well, it's the, a team thing. <sighs> and, and, the, and, and the one thing that I always caution 49er fans with when it comes to Trey Lance is, let's say he comes in and lights it up. Robert. Let's say he comes in. And we'll just say best-case scenario, he wins Offensive Player of the Year in the NFC. I don't see him winning MVP because there's always going to be politics in that, right? They're always going to, oh, Brady, we'll give it to Brady again, right? Let's say Lance (laughs) comes in and lights it up, right? Let's say he does that. Now, what happens 
if he goes into the playoffs and plays a game like the Bills and Chiefs played and he's on the losing end of it, that's he'll... why Shanahan and Lynch built the team in a way that we don't necessarily need to score 40 points to beat you. We have yep. enough resources to stop you. We have it's... enough resources to run the clock. We have enough resources to quick strike. We have enough resources to score enough and, points. And, and we have in plenty of strategies playoff, to get them both done. Exactly, to beat you. Yep. But if if Lance, if he says, oh, I'm going to turn Lance loose, and Lance comes out, has 40 or 50 total touchdowns, and, okay, we can go into the playoffs with that. Guess what? There's a chance you can run into a hot Matthew Stafford, Kyler Murray, uh, Aaron Rodgers. You never know. Dak Prescott. And I'm not saying those guys are great. No, but I'm saying but, but, a shootout goes either way, Robert. Yes, but always. And I hate those. Usually win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Edmund, we're yeah, good stuff. Yeah, because everybody's on average on the <laughs> we we got to stop though, fam. I, awesome okay, stuff, sure. you know. I, I I love to hear things that make sense. It's so refreshing. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be back midweek and uh, be definitely looking for you. <laughs> Appreciate you, fam. All right, Absolutely. all right, man. Good stuff. Have a great night. Oh, uh, you too. Oh, and one thing we've not had, and we have to have, is Michael has been missing. For the last two or three shows. <laughs> uh, Michael, come on in from Chicago. <laughs> I like to debut my entrance, my entrance introduction. <laughs> from Chicago, Illinois, yeah. the Chicago Sports Talk, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Oh God! Well, Michael, I, I I suspect that you have some things that you want to get off your your chest. Why don't you just jump right into that? All right, I heard what Papa Dragon had had, had to say right after because I listened listened to that because I wanted to hear what uh he wanted to say, and the thing that he said was, "Oh, I believe in Trey Lance because." Jerry Rice vouched for him. And I want to say they can vouch for him all they want to. But if he's, but it, it's not what is said about him matters. It's about how he plays matters. And I think we all can agree it's how he plays that matters. You can vouch for a player all you want, but when, if they show it on the field, that's all that matters to me. Yeah. All right, I've got nothing to say about that. I, I agree. So, were there any other quest? Were there any other people that want to? Because I didn't. Let, let's be honest. All the rookie quarterbacks showed promise, but they really did not have a good season. But I can't say say, say like Trey Lance is going to be a bust or Trey Lance is gonna gonna suck because he only had two starts and he really he has to have a full season where he has a quarterback one. And, but for Justin Fields, he has had experience in the game than Trey. That's that's the upper hand that Justin Fields has over Trey Lance. And I think we all can agree that that's the upper hand between Justin Fields and Trey Lance when I'm comparing those two quarterbacks. Yeah, no, that, that can't be argued. I mean, it, it, time in the NFL is everything, you know. It, Quarterbacks and everybody else, on most positions except for running back, because running backs usually hit the ground running. Uh, and, yeah, I did I, I, in a literal sense, because they don't have to be taught anything. They have to learn anything. They, they're pretty much on instincts and skills they develop down through the years, through high school and college. And so when they get to the pro level, if they're that good and they got picked out, they're probably going to be fine because they're not doing anything much different than they were when they are going through the ranks, right? But skill positions, uh, especially, Especially quarterback. Okay, what that quarterback used to see, he ain't seeing no more. Now, things are happening at a lightning quick pace. And also, defensive coordinators at a professional level have got the best of the best out there doing what they do. This is why when you see a quarterback make a mistake here and there, he's got to make mistakes. The guys he's playing at aren't wimps. Some of those guys are getting paid $20 billion a year to stop your ass. So that's why I always, you know, you, quarterbacks, you can't measure quarterback how great he is 
because he can go out there and never make a mistake. Because if you're expecting that, it's never going to happen. So minimal amount of mistakes, good game plan, a team effort where if the quarterback's doing a good job, you don't have your cornerback, your right tackle, your linebackers, and everybody else screwing up. It's got to be done. Quarterback cannot play Jesus out there and bless the whole team every game. You gotta work it together. And if there's failures, they usually end up being partially the team's fault, not just that QB. So we were just talking about that. With Shanahan, he knows that. That's why he builds a team that doesn't make the quarterback do all the heavy lifting, because that's a formula for failure. But if I got a team that works in sync, like a big machine. Now, now you got the chance to steamroll people. And that's what we're going to see. So, so Trey should fall right into place uh, this year. I don't know how well he's going to do. He's got some things that young quarterbacks are going to have to go through. But other than that, um, we'll see. Um, for the 49ers fans that said, oh, Trey Lance is going to go off against the Bears, I could be wrong about this. I could be wrong about this. Trey Lance is going to look raw against the Bears because it's his very first game starting as the 49ers quarterback one. Like, if if it was Jimmy Garoppolo, then I would understand. But Trey Lance has yet has only had two games of experience. If he, he doesn't have 10, he doesn't have 50, he doesn't have 100 experience playing playing in the game. Trey Lance is going to look raw against the Bears. So I expect the 49ers to run the ball and only pass if it's like a third and 12 or like a third and tw- uh, 15 and a critical situation. But the point is that may- maybe the 49ers fans are right. Maybe Trey Lance can go out there and uh, – uh, make uh, and make magic happen. Maybe I could be wrong and coming on the call and eating my words, but <laughs> I see Trey Lance having an average season. You know, Trey Lance will have moments where, you know, he uh, shows like flashes, but there are going to be some moments where he struggles. And I think the 49ers callers that called in and wrote against uh, that are against me can pretty much agree that Trey Lance is probably going to look raw against the Bears because. He has yet to start as the quarterback one. What do you think, Rumble? No, I, I already said he's, he's going to have to go through some things. I don't know um, how prepared you can make a, a young quarterback uh, in the first few set. Like we, Well, we, we see it every year. Quarterbacks come into the league, and they usually come in with, with, with teams that are subpar, and, and they get beaten badly. Uh, Everything's going at him at 100 miles an hour. Usually, and the worst thing they have to a young quarterback coming into the league is a bad offensive line. Uh, that's <laughs> your legs won't help you. Somebody in here thinks that Trey can get away from Aaron Donald. <laughs> Impossible. Unless you look. You the know, thing that Justin that Justin Fields <sighs> improved on in OTAs is a quick ball release. If you go look at his OTA videos. He threw the ball in 0.4 seconds. Look it up. That's the best thing they could save a quarterback against guys like Aaron Donald. You don't run away from Donald. He has quickness within 10, 5 to 10 yards that is unbelievable. That's why he is who he is. Anyway, Mike, our, our, our clock collapsed already. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that, that was quick. Uh, yeah, it was. I, I'm kind of surprised myself. Anyway, my good stuff. We'll, uh, All right. I'll be back midweek. 49ers fans, Don Burr, <laughs> Papa Dragon, and anybody else, acknowledge me. <laughs> Good night, Mike. All right. uh, and, and Jesus and Brother Eddie. Jesus, come on in. Yo, what's up, Ron? Go. Oh, Eddie, baby, well, I'm checking out. Obviously, Frankie Gore came in and made a bold prediction that the 49ers will indeed uh, be in the Super Bowl this year against the Bills as he picked them as well. Why well, AFC is going to be tough. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that. Um, and also, he went on to say that that he's leaning toward Jimmy being the answer if the 49ers do get to that Super Bowl uh, next year. I know how strong you feel about that. Go ahead, bring your uh, your case. 
Yo, know, my case is, you know, real quick, Rambo. Let me give a shout out um, to to Rambo Sports, you know, and to Productions. You know, shout out to my brother Eddie E. You know, and shout out to all my boys in the chat. I'm trying to make it cut a uh, shorter sweep. My prediction, you said Rambo. Or yeah, yeah, my yeah. Uh, are, are we going to two bull against the Bills? <laughs> I mean, we, we. I mean, we have to make it to playoffs first. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I know, um, right? It's gonna be. It's gonna be work. Uh, who's the quarterback gonna be? You know, if we're if we're keeping Jimmy, you know, we're keeping Jimmy. You know, like there's two sides. You know, one. Oh, you can't have a, a 25 million dollar backup quarterback and say Kyle doesn't want to let him go because he's scared that someone's gonna pick him up. You know, or. You know, or you have one side that says, oh, yeah, uh, we traded all these draft picks, you know, just to have this guy on the bench. So it's kind of like we're not we're not really in a win-win situation, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. hey, do we want to pick the right guy for, 20, for the 2022 season? Or are we going to try to start out this, this young kid? Are we going to keep on going with Jimmy G that has injury prone problems, you know? So it's kind of like at the end of the day, I think that's why Kyle Shanahan hasn't moved Jimmy. You know, maybe I'm sorry I, that cause I just don't get it. Yeah, you know, I just want to know if, if we're going to be able to make it to playoffs. You know, we have a really tough season. You know, really and tough. you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm very, I'm very confident in our team. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying oh, we're not going to go to playoffs, but you know, we have to, we have to uh, get there first before we start talking to, about Super Bowls. You know, I'm not saying that in, in the see, way see, to see, offend anyone. Was, see, that's the thing. Nobody talks about Everybody thinks we're assumed to be in the playoffs next year. You know how much work it takes? We underestimate how tough it is to get into the playoffs. So we just think, switch quarterback, we go right back to the Super Bowl, and we win it. This, to me, is almost an embarrassment because if anybody – really believes that getting into the, into the playoffs is just a piece of cake, he got to be kidding me. That is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a given. You know, so that's why I say, you know, we, 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 we switch quarterbacks and we get back to that, we get back to that Super win. Okay. Hopefully. Exactly, you know. Like, honestly, me, Rama, you know I'm, I'm a trade, I'm looking forward for trade land. Mm -hmm. You've been on that, you know, that I didn't want Jimmy Grapple for, for a long time. You made you know? that clear. You know, yeah. you know me for a really long time. For a long time. You know, I don't like to try to bash him because I know, you know, a lot of people in here love Jimmy and a lot of people hate Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I don't like to try to bash Jimmy Garoppolo. But, Rumble, like, I'm just tired of – I'm just tired of that uh, of the stats thing, you know. When he's in there, you know, he wins games. Okay. If he could win the games, then why haven't we given our defense any props? You know, our defense is what hey, kept us in, in. Jesus, don't they in, get in, all the props? The game for the longest. Them in the running games. Uh, did, Jimmy doesn't get any props. Th them in yeah. the running game. Th yeah. I feel like as as of recently, I felt like it's nothing but Jimmy, our, and our offense. You know, really. When Jimmy Garoppolo, that's what I feel. You know, that's what I feel. I feel like it, it's been our defense. You know, no, I, 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 I thought you were who's giving props to who. Yeah, I don't, Jimmy doesn't get any props. He just gets slammed. And then, the, and, and the reason we're winning is because of the defense and the run game. And Jimmy is just out there, no particular, not doing anything in particular, but he's just out there. The, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why I usually stand up for him. That's not true. But anyway, right? You know, you know, I'm looking forward to to Trey Lance, Rombo. You know, the only thing I said is. That he's gonna open up the playbook more than Jimmy has ever done, you know. We could now do read options, quarterback just, sneaks. Yeah, you know, explain. Okay, yeah, go go ahead. Elaborate on that because I, I always wonder what people mean when they say that. Go. Let me hear more. Open up the playbook. Yeah. You know, we could be. You know, we, it could be third and and short, and you know, and we could literally fake. You know, Rumble. The Kyle Shanahan playbook is Jimmy Jimmy G literally pretend about to hand it off. To 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 the running back, <laughs> to whoever's in, in the backfield, uh, you know, right next to him, you know, he's ready to give him the the ball and pretend to hand it off, and you know, pretend 
that the running back has it, but yet again, he just ends up trying to throw it for a first down, whether he converts or not. Now, Trey Lance, if he really wanted to, he could actually do that and really try to run for the first down. You know, the, you know, Trey Lance is mobile. You know, we have a better shot to, to score him with Trey Lance than, than, we do, than we do with Jimmy Garoppolo. Whether it's quarterback sneaking or Trey Lance showing on the run or, you know, Trey Lance helps gain a couple yards or he just throws it downfield because Trey Lance has an arm and no one's not giving him his recognition, you know? No, he, he you, gets a lot of recognition for that. In fact, Jerry, you know, pointed out the other day, we know about his powerful arm, but what he needs to do is develop a little touch for the intermediate game. He's still throwing bombs. I thought that they worked on that the off season, but apparently, according to Rice, that's still something that he can improve on. Arnold, you you, you can work on accuracy all you want. No, not but, accuracy. But touch. That... Touch. You know. You know. Remember how Cap the guy used to be ten yards away, and Cap reached back and threw him a bomb, <laughs> and damn near killed the man. Except for except for. Uh, we had one receiver that can handle that. Uh, the guy we got from Baltimore. I anyway, call Bolden. Yeah, Bol- Bolden's I call like Bolden. power man, right? Cap throw him a bomb ten yards away. Bolden just snatched it out the air, you know. But then you got Crabtree and the other guys. Ball's hitting him, goes through the hands, bounces off the chest, goes straight up in the air, gets picked off. You know, I don't know if uh, you can teach a quarterback to how to pull a string on the ball a bit. Or know when to do that if you can, you know. Because if I got a short route and I, it's a it, it calls for touch and timing, I can't throw a rocket, you know, deep downfield. Let that thing go. But if you got a timing around three, two, one, two, Mississippi, bam, you got to be able to anticipate that route runner, where the defender is, and how much velocity to put on that shot. Now this is something that I, he can't get any credit for, but Jimmy G actually does that pretty well. Uh, that's where Kyle's, you you mentioned Kyle's playbook. This is part of the playbook, uh, Jesus. I don't think Kyle dummies down the playbook so much as people actually think. (laughs) Yes, sir, Jimmy. Opening up the playbook is interesting because we used to run play action. You know what Jimmy's percentages were in play action? They were over 100. For some reason, Kyle stopped doing that, and it could be more than just about Jimmy on that. I don't know why they stopped doing that because that was working really well. But, Rambo, look, how come we only talk about the wins that Jimmy Garoppolo has potentially won us? You know, I felt like he came back for us against the Saints, and I give him big props on that game. You know, when he beat the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2017, you know, his 2017 run, I give him props, you know, I give him props, you know, for somewhat of 2019, and I give him a little bit of props in in 2021. 2021. But the thing is, in playoffs, you know, his his stats are not good. You know, I want a guy that that, that could ball, Rombo. You know, whether if it's not Trey Lance, you know, who who whoever our quarterback will be in the future. You know, I just know that it's not going to be the, Jimmy Garoppolo. You want to keep the keep you the know, search I'm going. Sorry. Yeah, just keep the circle. We'll you find know, the right guy. If it's not Trey Lance, you know that's what we're gonna have to do. Yeah. You know, we, we we can't hold on to guy forever. You know, no, no, that's no, what no, we it. did with Alex Smith. That's what we did with Alex Smith. And well, okay, you know, we hey, did, so you we know, gotta we go. But cap- listen, here's the thing: Alex Smith went through how many coaches? You know, I there's just some things that there's nothing that could be done. It can't all be blamed on the QB all the time. But we'll see. If Trey does start, I, I, I wish him well. I hope I don't want to lose. I hate that. Especially, you know, but we got to get to the playoffs. And like you said, don't be don't be assuming that that's all we need to do to get to the playoffs. It could be worse. We'll find out, though. <laughs> Rumble, but but what happens if Trey Lance does ball out for us? Happy, happy days. Everybody's happy. Unless well, the haters they got there's haters on Lance too. Haters are everywhere. But I think the majority of yeah. us are going to be delighted. I'm not. I'm going to be. We haven't even given the guy a chance. The guy's a rookie. That's, the guy's only suited up for two games that started, right. and he doesn't get and he doesn't get the and he doesn't well, yeah, get the Jesus, patience that we're giving the patience to Jimmy. As I say, we got to go. He's got to go in and put some time in. 
And as soon as that happens, then the evaluations and the praise or whatever, that's what it takes place. Yes, we don't have any body of work yet, you, got, you, you know, but he needs the opportunity to go get it. And I agree with that. So, all right. We're gonna, I'll be, I'll be back right, midweek. We'll, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. All right. We'll continue this conversation because I, I just, I just want to hear what, what you have to say about our, about our rookie. That's all I, I'm just interested in. I, I got That's nothing all. bad to say about him. I never do. I just know that he's, he's young. He just got started. And we got to wait to see what we got. I I like the praise, I, I, I love the the faith, but I'm a little concerned. We'll see. <laughs> I ain't got nothing bad to say about him though. For sure, Rumble. I hope you have a blessed night. Thank you for taking my call. You too. Give my best to Eddie too. All right, fam. Good night. All right, for sure. I got you. Uh, hey, hey, Tony. Hey, Rumble. Tony. Uh, well, Tony. Frank Gore continues to to put spice into the pot, and this pot is is, is pretty hot now. <laughs> It'll burn your tongue off, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Wait, I thought when you go back down to the, the 49 legends that have made it, Joe Montana, uh, he thinks the trace is not ready. Uh, then you got uh, you, you, you got Rice believes that yes, we love us, but Rice jumped back and backtracked, and then of course you got number eight, you know. I think, you know, it, I think because Joe and uh, and Steve don't like each other. <laughs> so no matter what the other one says, they're going to go against one another, right? And then you got Frank today. He says, and Frank helped, helped Jed make the decision. He says, yeah, I, I, but still, they may not look good out there doing what they do, but they do win. And I think, I think Trey should get a few more reps. See, that's. It's a, it's a, it's a mixed bag, Tony. You know, I just said. Uh, but go ahead. There's a lot of panic out there, but the way I, the way I can I can come up with it in my own mind is that Kyle's going to have to uh, obviously adjust. Um, maybe uh, you know a bit more pre-snap movements, post-snap uh, movements. Yeah, Kyle's um, is tough. You know. Get the tight ends involved a little bit more, uh, create some more confusion. You know, I mean, instead of Debo, we can have um, you know Jennings running across the middle to help out Trey because um, you know I mean he's six four, six five, whatever he is. Mm-hmm. He's a big strapping young lad, yep. and he's not scared of uh, running that, those routes across the across the danger zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Uh, he's got yak in him as well, mm-hmm. so he can take over Debo running across the middle, and then you got Debo out in the it, well, you know, out with the rest of them. So you got yak in the middle, yak uh, out the back, and a few minor adjustments here to, there to help the young young boy. I think um, if Kyle looks at it, I think he can pull it off, Rombo. He can he can I, and 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 he's got a. Uh, it seems Trey has a, a high IQ for the game, because with Kyle Shanahan's, there's a lot of movement going on, and it takes and people don't understand what Jimmy does out there. What every quarterback has had any success in Kyle Shanahan's, you've got to process and you've got to process quick. You got to make the right decision. That's the tough part, you know, because you got several moving parts, one predicated off of another. You got to glance a feel. You got to look at the defense and see what you're doing. Did it work? Did it? Did Did you get the desired effect from our receivers and guys out there? This is why, Tony. I've been complaining for years about the receiver. People don't get it. Rookie receivers and guys that are subpar or or second tier, they're not it going to be as good at it. So that means now Jimmy or any quarterback we got, his job is now twofold. He's got to help this guy. They got to guide him through it and yet make that offense efficient. Can you do it with the material you got? It's like I said, when Emmanuel Sanders came, all of a sudden you notice how the 49ers started looking a lot smoother, a lot better. All of a sudden Jimmy, well, who was getting grief every pass, looks different. It's That's the way it's going to be. Well, Trey's got to be able to do that. Well, that's why we need to give him <coughs> – <laughs> Excuse me. That's why we need to give him a couple of extra options. Like, I mean, we'll see. We, we've discussed that before. It's just say you're a, a pass-heavy team. Yeah. We're lucky in the sense that, that we can do both. And 
thank Christ for the run game in in this in this particular scenario because he can hand the ball off to to Juwan Jennings or you know somebody else that can run the rock and uh, get yak. Yeah. So if you give him a couple couple of options at the same time, there's a couple of dudes running. You know, one's running across the middle and and it, and he can if he can process it quick enough, all well and good. Then Jennings gets the ball. If not, he throws it out the back and one of the other guys uh, mm-hmm. picks it up and gets some yak. And that's got to happen within about uh, a three, four second window. <laughs> that's what's that's yeah. the scary part. <laughs> Woo! I know, but the more options we give him in that split second, and, and you know yourself, your eyeball can process millions of bloody movements yeah. in, a, in a split second. Yep. So the more options we give him, the more we support him, and, you know, we get some uh, fakery and uh, trickery going on out there with Kyle, you know, involving uh, George Kittle or maybe as the decoy or somebody else, you know, the other tight end or whatever the case may be, um, the better it's going to be. The more mm-hmm. movement and confusion Kyle can create to help him out, the better it's gonna, he's going to be. It'll give him a, a little bit more confidence as the season goes on. And he should be able to play himself into the into the season, and by the end of it, yeah, you know, I'm hoping that he's going to be, you know, halfway through the season, he's going to be flying. Yeah, it's, it, it is a process, a learning process, you know. But Frank Frank Gore does says we're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to be playing the Bills. Look, it's possible. It all comes down to Kyle and I, the playbook. Tony, I the Bills are in trouble. They're in the AFC. I, that was a bold thing, you know. He, why? I did. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna figure. I'm gonna look at this later. I want to look at the AFC. The, the 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 heat is coming from every direction in that <laughs> that division. AFC is crazy. <laughs> Woo! Just the AFC. Just the AFC West alone is insane. I, I, yeah. Yeah, and then like one of the other callers just said, you know, when you get to the playoffs, it's just, uh, it's different. It's anybody's football. game, you know. It's yeah. Just, yeah, well, different different football. Everybody knows that, and it's just who gets out of bed the hungriest that day, and anything can happen. Mm-hmm. You know, things can go to plan, or things can turn to shit, and everybody yeah. can start making mistakes. And uh, you, you know, like I said the other day, it only takes one person to lose the whole game, but it takes a yeah. whole team to win it. Yeah, and those things usually take so, place in the fourth quarter, and what's every year is close. Anybody think somebody's going to go into, into a Super Bowl and just blow the other team out? The 49ers did that once a long time ago. That rarely and happens anymore. The other good thing, Rombo, is nobody's got film on this kid. Yeah. You know, with the 49ers. So I'm, I'm counting on that as well. So, um, you know, the rest is up to Kyle. Like I said, you know, he, he, he's got to give him a, a draw up. Obviously, the, the playbook at the beginning of the season is going to be probably completely different towards the end of the season. He's going to keep adding stuff as the kid gets more confident in his game. You know, what and I mean? he re- recognizes his capabilities versus his non-capabilities. But you know, there are several nuances in Kyle Shanahan's offense that will probably uh, not be changed. I think he's got some standard the short things. Games, but as you know, Rombo, the short game is extremely important to Kyle. Yeah, because with the with the with the yak dudes that we've got that all he needs to do is just provide a hole for him to, to run through as soon as mm-hmm. they get through that hole mm-hmm. it's on for young and old you know mm-hmm. what i mean west coast they're, they're very hard to stop that's mm. it west coast but offense there's, Tony. there's gonna be you, nothing go wrong with uh trey hand handing off the ball for you know a couple of games here and there and uh, it, you know, but that's what we used to get. Ah, oh, Jimmy Jesus there because Kyle doesn't trust him. He hands the ball off. We've got a run game, for Christ's sake. Not everybody has the run game that we do. That's imp- extremely important. Always at the top of the list. That's that's what he does. That's, that's Shanahan's dad. That's Kyle. And they work off a of play action. Usually from that run game, get that established. And now you got the defense on their heels. That's the whole point of it. You know? So anyway. everybody has to throw the ball. Yeah. At the end of the day, it comes down to who. Who we know, everyone has to throw it. So whoever's got the best run game, well, they're a step ahead of 
uh, the rest of the pack, aren't they? Balanced attack, Tony. That's the name of the game. Otherwise, otherwise, my defense doesn't have to work hard. We can take a day off. We already know what we're going to do. Because all they're going to do is pass the ball. Or all they're going to do is run the ball. You know? Give a, give a diversity out there and a balanced attack. Now the defense doesn't know what the hell they're going to do. So that's what you do. So That's it. I couldn't well, Tony, agree more. Tony, we did it again. We were having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see you midweek, okay? All right, brother. Shout All out right. to everybody and uh, see you in the next chapter. Thanks, Tony. Cheers. Cheers, mate. And uh, Deshaun Page. Deshaun, aren't you the one who, uh, we're, we're donating every time we had an INT? <laughs> and that was 2019 when we had all kind of INTs. Anyway, Deshaun, uh, thanks a lot. He says, what's up? Trey Lance needs more experience before he can get uh, to the Super Bowl. Pain first, and then he's, yeah, it's unfortunately, that's probably true. Hey, Brian, the, the, of the Brian, Brian Culp family. Brian, get in here. Hey, Rombo, how are you tonight? Oh, Brian, man, it's weekend time, man, overeating and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> it's nothing but fun. Hey, hey uh, shout out to you and Productions. Thank you for the show, because without you, we wouldn't have a chat. We wouldn't have all the conversation. We'd just be arguing on Twitter. Hey, and tell that, you know. but I tell it to Niner Rich, who's getting mad at me because I, I, I don't, I don't want to talk about Jimmy. By the way, Niner Rich, there's still what else is there to talk about? By, by the way, if anybody along with Niner Rich is out here complaining about the content, then give me some suggestions. I'd rather go another direction. But Jimmy and well, people around him keep making headlines, and that's what you got to go to. I can't just make up mundane things. <laughs> You know, that's one thing I would definitely like to piggyback off of and say, you know, like shout out to you once again, because you let anyone call in. So Jamie fans or Trey fans or Niner fans or Seattle fans, Atlanta fans. We have Cowboy fans from Kentucky, Chicago Bear fans. I mean, anyone's welcome to call in. So if you want to change the narrative of the show, you call in and you talk. But just to hit the like button doesn't hurt nobody. Thank thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Hit the like. Appreciate that. My God. So I wanted to call in and I want to say something. <clears throat> if you win the Super Bowl and it's by three points, don't you still win the Super Bowl? Damn right. One point works. So, so with that with that point, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're, you know, a prolific offense. If you get to the Super Bowl and you win it by one point, you, you still win the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking as long as Trey Lance comes in and he plays decent – and, you know, trial doesn't, you know, make him be Superman out there. Not that he can't be Superman, yeah. but as long as he just plays, you know, then I think we can get to the Super Bowl and we can really win it because I think he has all the intangibles. But for them to say, oh, you know, like Jimmy can't do it or this or that, it, it takes a lot just to get to the Super Bowl. And you got to listen to your coach. If your coach is saying run the ball, you run the ball. And you guys got to think about it, too. Shanahan was in Atlanta. Why'd they lose the game? They stopped running the ball. Then we get to the Super Bowl, we stop running the ball, we start passing, then the Chiefs intercepted, then the, uh, the um, Chiefs, not the Chiefs game, the Rams game that just happened, the championship game, we didn't give it to Debo, and we started passing the ball at the end of the game. It's not Kwaski Tart who dropped the interception, we stopped running the ball, you know, and why? Because they stacked the box, that's fine, or maybe Debo needed a break, I don't know. We're not on, you know, we watch the game, we don't play the game. And then that's another thing. It's like, you know, some people want the Niners to score 50 touchdowns in, in a season. Well, that's fine. But you, you're not we the offense, do. you know, and you're not the coordinator. And if the Niners are built on running the ball, they're going to run the ball. You can still root for the Niners, but they just might not be that offense, that the flashy offense or the one that you want. It's not Madden football. And Brian, you know, I just, just want like to piggyback off that. You know, how many defenses are giving up 50 points a week? It's just not like that out there. When you win a game now in the NFL, you got to work your ass off. Some of the worst teams in the league are not going to let you score 50 points. So, Brady, everybody else, they're going out there, they're winning games, and the margin of victory, I bet you, you know, I need to go get that stat. What is the average margin of victory in the NFL? Teams are not getting blown out on a regular basis. Well, there is the Detroit Lions. <laughs> But you know what? Most teams it are does. not. It you does know? happen. It does happen a con situation. You might have one or two weeks where something gets yeah, really maybe, blown out. Yeah, the next week, they're yeah. only losing by a touchdown. The margin of victory is really close now. You know, and it's just one of those crazy things. And before I jump off the phone, 
you remember the Niners were talking about possibly getting uh, Tom Brady after Jimmy got hurt. Well, the, mm -hmm. the Super Bowl collapsed, and then there was something that was said, you want to keep that guy over me. Mm -hmm. Why would that guy want that guy coming to his team and backing him up in Tampa Bay? Now, if we want to trade him to Tampa Bay and they want to take him, good. Let him go. That's fine. Mm -hmm. More happy, you know, more power. But, but why would that, why would Tom Brady be like, you know, campaigning for Jimmy to come to his team. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I was going to post it. There's an article saying no chance for Jimmy Garoppolo to be traded to Tampa Bay. No chance. And there were several articles. Everybody's going after him. I don't know when he – I didn't get a chance to read it because I was in a hurry. But uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is not – Tampa Bay is not interested in going after Jimmy. Every week – Every week there's a new narrative. You know, teams don't really leak their hand. They they write something. Something's being you know read for their fans and everybody to read. Mm -hmm. But you know, I do remember something in the in the off season saying Bruce Arians doesn't want Jimmy Garoppolo. This is when Tom Brady was retired or talking about coming right. back or what. Yeah. He said Arians didn't want him. So I I don't know. I mean, like eventually, you know, even if he's quarterback too, I don't mm -hmm. pay the bills. I'm going to root for the Niners. And, yes. you know, I mean, like, if they run the ball 40 times or they pass the ball 40 times, but they're going to do whatever is best. And at the if end of the we, day, and you if know, we trade, win, trade yes. Ah. Yeah. Go, go, go. That's it. Win. That's it. It doesn't yeah. matter if we win by Robbie Gold or if we win by a safety, as long as we're winning and we get to the Super Bowl. And that's the other thing. With Jimmy Garoppolo's success, as many years as he's been on our team and as many championships as he's been to, and, you know, you know, without the injuries and stuff, this is a lot of pressure to put on Trey Lance. And for people to go and say he's king and he's only played two and a half games, let's let him get in, let's let him play, let's not put too much pressure on him because think about it. If he doesn't get to the playoffs this year, who's getting fired? If he doesn't get to the championship, who's getting fired? If we don't have at least, you know, a, a decent run this year, is it Trey Lance's fault or is it Kyle Shanahan's fault? Or, you know, I mean, you know, is it the O-line fault? Who's going to blame? Brian, that's an argument that's going to come up, too. It's going to be split. Is Some of the people going to blame right, Kyle right. because he didn't let Jimmy uh, uh, Trey play last year. And then someone's going to be Trey because there was two first-round picks given up. And there's going to be those people, oh, we gave out two first-round picks? We don't get a draft pick this year either? He's going to be that guy. And then, you know, I'm not it, saying he has to win it all next year. I'm not saying that, but how many years do you give him until you start blaming somebody else? You know, and at the end of the day, I need to play. He needs to play, but it's like, we're just, we can't wait for football to start. And hey, everybody, thanks again for having me on, Rombo. Thanks, oh, you know, Red and Gold. We want to see MC here soon. He has not been around. And <laughs> shout out to the faithful. Everyone hit the like. And again, if you don't like the narrative, call in. Yes. All right. Jay, exactly. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And little Lily. All right, fam. All right. There he goes. And, and the law rides in. Hey, Brian. To all the teams in the NFC West. Talk about Arizona. Talk about them lambs. <laughs> and Seattle Chicken Hawks. The law says know your role and keep on shutting your mouth. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be so what's glad up, if we get that position what's this up, year. Rumbo? I'm telling you right now because Frankie Gore says we're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. We're, we're going to be playing the Buffalo Bills. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. Got us ticked. Got us ticked already. Well, he's supposed to. He's yeah, a, he he's is. A, He's all time great. He's supposed to. He's supposed to keep us up high. But then he shocked me He's as I read on. I, I I took that out because Frank. When Frank speaks, I like to read. I read it, and then I read on, and I was shocked to find out that Frank says he believes that Jimmy Garoppolo is the best man for that job, and that Trey needs more reps. Okay. I said what? Yeah. Wow. That was mm. shocking. I thought this was all about everybody wants Trey to get in there and get going. So yeah. he pointed out the reasons why, and 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 there were and there was nothing unusual about the reasons, you know. So I don't know, yeah. what, 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 Brian. You you you've got feelings on this, I know. What 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 are you thinking here? Are we going to the Super Bowl to see the Bills? And is, should Trey Lance to get some more reps before we start talking about putting him in that position? Or is he ready to go now? Well, we'll have a. I mean, we'll have with training camp coming up. We'll see. I I I would say. Yes, to get some re kind of refine his skills, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a unlike seasons in the past. We'll have preseason, you know, we'll have preseason yeah. games, yeah. 
and and so we'll definitely see. We'll definitely we'll, we'll definitely see where he at. Brian, you know what though? But we might question, not because but, you, quarterback one doesn't play much in preseason. I think that's right. where Trey's going to be ranked. Yeah. What's going to be interesting is yeah. who is going to play then. You can't put Purdy out there for for all four quarters of the preseason. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this <laughs> developed. Sudfell right. and Purdy. Yeah. That's all we're going to see. And Jimmy got to stay out of the way because he can't get hurt. And Trey's quarterback one. Yeah. He's got to stay out the way. He can't get hurt. I, this is going to be crazy. Yeah. It could be boring. Yeah, we he he'll be lucky to get a series. You know, at, at most if. If 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 Trey Lance winds up being QB one, then he'll get a series and most, at most. of the, you know, at at most, you know, for most of them, he'll get a series and then they'll snatch him out. Then whoever else, whoever is back up behind him, they, they'll get the most. They'll get some more reps. But, Kyle's gonna um, make his decision from practice anyway. He's always said that. He said, "I get I get more out of watching practice games. If I had my way, we'd play three preseason games in that set yeah. or two. He doesn't want to play preseason games anyway." But we got a lot going on. I mean, we 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 got a lot ahead of us, Rumbo. I mean, with you know who's you know we still got a lot a lot is in the air right now with mm-hmm. you know with the with our QB situation and we trying to get rid of Jimmy G and yeah, will the Browns be ready or will Tampa Bay be ready? <laughs> you know, since they didn't drop their name, now their name has come up. No, I, you know, there's another they, article out today. That it, the, the articles are in brackets. There's no chance for Tampa Bay to get involved with Jimmy G. And something oh. else about the Browns. Browns paid oh. money uh, for Baker Mayfield to go play somewhere else. They got to pay Deshaun. Now to bring in Jimmy and pay him twenty plus million dollars. Yeah, I would suggest that we get over that. I don't see Jimmy going to Cleveland. Yeah, there may be someplace else. Right. I can't imagine going to Cleveland, spending more money, and he ain't could be there for but a few months. Yeah, I thought about that too, Rumbo. I, I I thought about that. I said, wait a minute. They guaranteed Deshaun the the forty acres and a mule. Now they think they're gonna come back and <laughs> eighty acres and two mules. I mean, that's 80, a lot of yeah, money. Oh, right. you Jesus! Think, you think they're gonna you think they're gonna have half a continent to give to Jimmy? You know. You know, on a you know on a one year deal, a mercy, on a on a mercy on a mercy trade. <laughs> unless you right, know. you know, unless they got subway sandwich shops down in, in Cleveland area. Because <laughs> yeah. see, the thing is, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, you got to plan. You got to put a stopgap in there, and that's why Jacoby right. people don't like Jacoby. Oh man, the Browns ain't gonna go with Jacoby. Man, they can get Jimmy. Man, they yeah. better wait a minute, man. Jacoby's gonna start because uh, ain't nobody paying Jimmy twenty six million dollars. I think the I think Rumbo the, the the wheel won't start rolling until we see what's gonna happen to Deshaun Watson. I think yeah, I think the wheels as far as his QBs, you know, with Jimmy and you know, I think Deshaun's gotta face Cadell. It will until we until we until we see what's gonna happen with Deshaun Watson. I think how long and when I, I think if if Deshaun gets eight games or more, then, you know, there there might be some movement. Otherwise, I think Rumble is going to – I mean, I think not you. I think Jimmy G will, will be right where he is. You know, because – He'll be right Goodell, where he is with us. And, you know, because Goodell's going to – how how many how long do you think he's going to suspend Deshaun for? You know, Goodell's going to say, listen, Deshaun, you know, you know how I feel about you. I have got to do my job, though, and I hope you understand that. But I, we got organizations that are already coming at us. You're going to come back next year, okay? I got it. You're out. Yeah. I know he's going to do that. You know he's going to do that. And yeah. Sean's going to say, yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, but me, Rombo, as I said the other night, I, 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 I said before, last time I called on there, I was like, I think the wheels won't start until they see where Jim, un, until they until they until see Jimmy throw. judgment has been passed for Deshaun Watson. Oh, Deshaun, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Sean's not playing this year. If they give Sean less than a, yeah. a season off, oh man, there's going to be organizations all over the NFL. Oh, not that the NFL really cares about that, but man, it'd be all rights movements. The Me Too people will be in there. It'll get ugly. They don't want that. Heat. <laughs> yeah. They don't want that heat. They'll they'll do Mm-mm. what they think, and probably some people are going to say, "Oh, you give them one year off." Oh, look, ladies or oh, men man. or whoever, 
What do we else? What else can I do? <laughs> That's how, can we throw him out for right. a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he don't, yeah. If if if, if Deshaun don't get nothing else, anything less than life imprisonment, they, they, <laughs> they're so- going they're going to have. All every football stadium is going to be they're going to be they're going to boycott. They're going to be picketing they're going to be inside. Boycott. I know, man. The picketing, NFL yeah. doesn't can't yeah. deal with that. Rombo, get ready. They 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 they're going to have more cameras on the outside of the stadium than yep. they will on the inside. The crowd the same size and outside Lord, as it is inside. And don't imagine and don't imagine and then if the shot if he, even when he does play even when he do come back oh you know. Deshaun There's not going to be complete to forgiveness. This stuff. They're going to have signs. Oh. They're going to have signs for them and everything. 24 you know? that's just like, hey, that's just like, women. That's just like what, yeah, Rumbo. That's just, you remember Ray Lewis? You remember his little ordeal when he had? Ray doing, killed he somebody and got, got away with it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, at least he allegedly did it. The evidence was compelling. Never mind. But anyway, still I know what you're it, saying. Criminal it. activity will, no matter go, who you are. It still got to go jagged. <laughs> it still got to go jagged. NFL is a different organization. They they march the, the beat of their own drum. And uh, that's, you know, when this is like Stephen A. Smith said, they're legislating. I want the NFL to explain to me where in the world do they have the capacity to go above the law and conduct their own investigation. If that be the case, and I'm sitting there listening to Stephen A. Smith, you know, he's right. If the court says yeah. okay, over, then that should be the yeah, end of it. Right. We're going to do or conduct our yeah. own investigation. I said, what are you? Yeah. <sighs> so, you know. So, Brian, we did too much political conversation on Deshaun. We're out of time. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we did get off. Yeah, we did get off on the political end. <laughs> <laughs> would, you know, but you're right though. Deshaun is <laughs> is going to have effect on on a lot of people around the NFL. So it, we're going to see. Yeah. But I'll it's not gonna, but, yeah, yeah. Just just watch these next week or so. Is with you know, soon as soon as as soon as it's determined how long, when, and how long, then transitions will be going on. Watch watch out for the transition. I know. Uh, anyway, I'll see you midweek, watch Brian. Out. All right. All right, brother Rombo. Shout out to you. Shout out to the Forty Nine er Empire, and shout out to production. Yeah, they the appreciate law is it. Out. Thanks, fam. Looking forward to midweek. Have a great night. All right. See you, Rumbo. See ya. And it's the other Jack, not out in the UK. Hey, Jack. Jack it is, Rambo. <laughs> well, Jack, we're, we're, we're going over the Frank Gore statement that jumped off the, uh, you know, because there's a lot of stuff on the media right now. But, you know, I said, this is funny. Jack, we're going to the Super Bowl, and we're going to be facing the Bills. So I kept reading, but then Frank interjected, but it should probably be Jimmy B to get him there because of various reasons. I said, really? So, Jack, your feeling on us going to the Super Bowl, who do you want to be the quarterback next year between the two that give us the best chance to get there? What, what are you thinking? Uh, man, you know, uh, I kind of like what Jerry was saying about uh, – letting them duel it out. But, you know, that has a lot of difficult complications to it. You know, I think Jimmy would get hurt or something. But I like the idea <laughs> of uh, Lance uh, beating out Jimmy because from the rumors and all the the writing that uh, all these guys did last year, I heard that uh, Jimmy lost that, 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 that duel last year, to be honest. You know, yeah. they just handed him, handed him the ball. But I heard that he lost that competition with Trey. And you know, you know, everybody is talking about Trey. You know how good he has to be, and this and that. Remember, he doesn't have to be good or better. He just has to be better than Jimmy. That's it. He just got to be better than Jimmy. And I think it's probably half the league is probably better than Jimmy, man. I don't know. You know, but it's it, it, it's you know, it's about this offense. Everybody cannot run Kyle's offense. Uh, you know, Kyle's got to actually design the offense in a way that can bring out the strengths of the player. Now, Jimmy's accomplishment, I, I don't know. You know, we, 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 did, we won a lot, okay? Now, maybe some people don't believe it was had anything to do with Jimmy. But 
the only frightening thing is when he wasn't there, we weren't winning. But then again, people, you got to keep in mind, too, when Jimmy wasn't there, it was usually with a few other people as well. So, you know, it, 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 yeah, it's going to be, be tough to see. If Trey can come in with a full arsenal of, of talent around him and win, you know, because no matter what, this is the bottom line, how good you are, how bad you are, really becomes irrelevant if you're losing. So this is the element yeah, you- that we got to deal with. But you got to remember, when Jimmy wasn't there, we had some practice, some practice team quarterbacks that was backing him up. So you, we can't really. I know everybody, all, all the faithful, is we're, we're afraid of going back to that place where you know we're we're an awful team. But bad. I think you know we got to look at the brightest. We got to look at the brightest side. You know, we just thought we don't want to get rich. I know you, Rambo. It sounds like you don't want Jimmy to walk because you don't want to go back to that dark place where we've been so many years ago. It's it's sort of a phobia. But, you know, it's not. I really hated that. Time, yeah, it's dude. a phobia, but <laughs> oh. yeah, I know you do. But but Ram, but Rambo, you know, you got to think about it, man. You you got to relieve some of that stress, my brother. You know, uh, it's <laughs> only go, Jimmy we're talking about. Come on, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> when in, when it'll definitely would cure that for you, but Quickly. I think uh, with Lance, like I said, he he just has to be better than Jimmy and. We got to remember all the rumors and all the, everything that was coming out with Lance when we drafted him, that this kid was smart as hell. You know, that he was, uh, that, you remember Kyle even said he picked up the, 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 uh, the offensive booklet pretty well. So I believe that he understands the offense. Now, can he go out there and get it done? I, yeah. I'm not too sure of that. To, to be honest, Rambo, you know what scares me a lot, and I, and I don't want to say this because it might shake up the chat room, <laughs> is that, I think we had this quarterback already, Rambo, to be honest. We did. Man. Trey Lance? But, yeah, we had Trey Lance already. You know, Kyle Kyle missed it. It was Kaepernick, Rambo. Oh. It was Cap. It was well. Cap, Rambo. When you really think about it, I was listening to you earlier, and you said that, you know, Jerry said, yeah, the kid can definitely slang it. He has a strong arm, but the intermediate pass he doesn't have, and that's what Cap was working on. So, if that's where we're at, we're, we basically have cap, and that's what I, I'm afraid of saying it. But uh, that's what Kyle wants. Kyle wants cap, and he had cap already. So this really, no, wait, it really no, wait. irks me because no, Jack, you, you, he, Kyle went out of his way to get rid of cap. Yeah, but he, it's like you remember. I don't know if it was a year or two ago when we played the Bills, and he saw uh, Allen. I think he fell in love with Allen. And he went for uh, Lance. But to be honest with you, if he would have took, he never even looked at Cap like that, I think, like no. to be, to run his well, offense. You know, Cap, Cap had but too if he much footage. And, and I guess, you know, you remember RG3 and Cap were similar in style. And Cap, and, and Kyle wanted nothing to do with RG3 after he left. So, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, you know, but RG3 actually Jack, was a. Yeah, no, he, was, he wasn't bad. Honestly, though, Jack, you got to realize, he does like pocket passers. Uh, that's he said for he's what he's doing now is a change of uh, of heart. Yeah, RG three was a better uh, touch passer than Cap. It was a much better QB than Cap. But you know, I, I'm just thinking that Kyle he kind of screwed up in the beginning and he let Cap walk when really he probably had his quarterback right there at least get him one Super Bowl. And he wasted a lot of years to me, you know, by drafting Lance because in reality, to me, when I'm really looking at it and I really step back is that we're looking at a younger calf. Also, to be Jack, honest, are we I, sure I, that Trey Lance is Cap's, I mean, uh, Kyle's pick? I'm still wondering. Well, it, it the thing is, is that that, that year that uh, – that Lance came out with, with the rest of those quarterbacks, it's really, it was, it really wasn't anybody that stands out, you know, and I, and I think that Lance had the bigger, don't know that you don't know what he's going to be. You know I mean? He had, he, it, it was a big, you, you don't know. And that drives a lot of people there. So I think that Kyle ac- actually got the quarterback he wanted, because if you remember uh, be- before the draft or after the draft, he stated that he called uh, John Lynch up late night because he was watching film on this guy and he said this is the guy mm. 
So I'm going to take his word for that, that he wanted land. Now, now where did that story come from? Now, well, it's, 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 it, you can find it on, you can, you know, you I, can find it on YouTube. This yeah, is, I, you can I, find it. It's, 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 it's got, we got film on it all over, but, and, uh, and, and, and it's Kyle, actually Kyle Kyle's, said he called. He, Kyle said it. Okay. Yeah, That's all Kyle I needed to know. He, I just wanted to tell you like that. Or yeah. was Kyle being quoted? No, he said it. He said it. It's, it's on video. He said he, Kyle, he called Lynch. Uh, it's about late two, three o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And he told Lynch, hey, get up. You know, uh, look at this kid. This is the kid I wanted. And Because remember. If that's, how, that's what the, he, you know. The, the thing is, Jack, all the way up until draft night, Chris Sims, who was the biggest advocate, others were all, you know, Cap, I mean, I mean, Kyle confused a lot of people by picking up anybody not named Max Jones. So, you know, I, these stories well, I about, think, and I, I, they're kind of confusing, but, we'll, you know, I, it's neither here nor there now. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think the Niners set everybody up pretty good of who they wanted to go with because I think that the league thought that the Niners was going to go with uh, the guy that Chicago picked up from Ohio. Uh, what's his name down there in the Bears? Uh, their quarterback. Uh, their young quarterback. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, I, I can't, I can't finish things. Yeah. It, anyway, it, yeah, he was uh, in the mix. Yeah, but I, I think they they try to run a little scheme to let the league kind of figure like they were going to put pick that guy. But, but you know actually, what? Actually, I think they're planning to. When you when you're picking number three, I don't know why you need to pay games. You already know who's the first two guys, and you you know they're they're out. So I, I don't know. God knows they may have had well, something who going was on. This, who, yeah, but I think the kid is ready. Uh, you know, I'm going to end it with this. I think the kid, you know, it, if the kid can be better than Guapolo, I think we have a decent season. Yeah. Um, well, it's going to be hard to but, be better. You know, that's a different. It's going to be hard to be better with the kid, but uh, I think, look, I think he can get it done. We can't, don't put our expectations too high this year, but if we get in the right. playoffs, it mm-hmm. might we might make a run, but if we don't make the playoff, just you know, just mm-hmm. next year it would be our year. But I think the kid, uh, we got to Rambo, we got to mm-hmm. move away from Guapolo because every time he throws the ball, I'm just, looking at you on yeah. when I'm doing the game, and you're squinting like, oh yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, if you don't believe it's, it's he's because I'm, pass, you know? I'm not. I'm not Guapolo. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Jimmy. I'm worried more about who's going to catch it. Are they ready to go? I want a touchdown. I I'm, I'm not, I don't judge Garoppolo's passes as bad. A lot of people do. Well, when I see really him zeroing want... in on things, I like what he does. But anyway, Jack, yeah, we do but have what to you really it. want, Rambo? You want you what you really want, Rambo, is a baller, and you know Jimmy's not a baller. So no, I do. I, really I, I disagree. I I, I think Jimmy's ball. I think he's tough. I really do. Make no mistake. He, I'm no, a I huge said a Jimmy baller. Fan. I said a baller, not tough. A baller, a guy no. that's gonna ball. That's gonna. All yeah. these guys are accountable receivers to be in the right place at the right time and grab them by the face mask and say, hey, man, you wasn't there. I need oh, you that. to be there. <laughs> and Garoppolo's not that guy. A tough guy leader. But they still follow him. Anyway, Jack, good stuff. But I mean, we got big, big, big productions looking at us because we're running way over time. All right? Because let's continue. When, when, you, when you on again, Rambo? When you on I, again? When you on again? Hopefully Wednesday. All right, Rambo. I'll see you. I'll see you Wednesday. All right, All right, All right Jack. Good night. Have a good night. And area code is 539. We go to Tony and Atlanta. Tony's at Atlanta. Tony, Tony, I see you in there defending yourself for being a Falcons fan. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's what is what is in chat. It's just brutal sometimes. <laughs> Tony, come on. I'm all ready to go. Yeah. I'm all ready to go. Was that who that was? Rob White. I, I ain't paying him no money. He said I. Because I've only been a Falcons fan for a short period of time, well, who else is you like? I said, dude, I am not on the witness stand, and you are not a lawyer. <laughs> Which is appropriate. <laughs> you know. He accused, he accused me of being 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> on what grounds? <laughs> you know what? Ready to go. Ready to go is amazing. Anyway, Tony. Um, we, our, our Hall of Fame running back has uh, kicked the bill. I mean, what I want to ask you is the Bills. Now, this is an even better question. Are the Bills coming out of the AFC? Out of all that, what? That's going to be a war in the AFC. My, I know, but the Bills God. are still tight. They lost. 
They lost Jerry Hughes, former first round pick, and um, Mario Addison, former Pro Bowler, but Rambo. These guys were in the Bills. Remember they, they were, yeah, but they, but uh, yeah, uh, Jerry Hughes and Addison. They went to uh, who did they go to? They went to a team. Oh, they went to the Houston Texans. But the Bills got like about on their defensive line and linebackers about eight players that are first or second round picks. Ooh. So they just signed Von Miller, who's a former first round pick. Um, they got that Greg Russo, their first round pick from last year, going to be taking over for uh, Hughes' spot. Um, and they're not missing a beat. I wonder how. Well, though, Ron, I do wonder how well Miller's going to do this year. You know, but last year he was wasn't he hurt uh, a little while before he came to the Rams, and then he got better after yes, he got uh, there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's going to be tough, man, because those Chargers are going to be good. <laughs> uh, Denver, I don't I, – Denver's a cleaner. I'm, I'm not sure about them. Well, and but the don't Raiders. Forget Cincinnati. And, yeah, don't forget Cincinnati. Everybody – well, you think they're just going to return to mediocrity? I don't hey, think so. Hey, Tony, they picked up some offensive linemen, and that's pretty much all they needed. Because, man, <laughs> dealing with Deshaun and, and T. Higgins, man, that's – and and they got a good running game with uh what's his name? I'm like, they they got a lot there. And their don't defense listen. don't listen. Yeah. And they signed a former first round pick we had him, Hayden Hurst, that tight end. He's gonna ball now. They, number one they picked up Hurst? Yes, they did. As their tight end, yep. Because they lost a their starting tight end free agency. A AFC, man. And you know, contrary to what people believe, if they think the Patriots gonna suck this year. Because everybody believes that Mac Jones is is awful, boy, I wouldn't bet on that. I don't. I, the Jets. I don't know what they're going to do. I can't figure. I can't get a beat on. And look out for Miami. You know, Tony, Miami oh, added. Good, yeah. Rambo. Yes, they did. I looked at their roster. Rambo, they're going to be good, but I don't like their quarterbacks. I don't like two of Rambo. He don't need to be good though. <laughs> I know. I know he's got back. Hey, Rambo, if I may interrupt one second. Power Fitness, I forgive you. I forgive you, man. Let, let it, It's <laughs> over with. He just apologized again. Power <laughs> Fitness, we're good. If you're hearing this chat, we're good. Now, I don't mind mixing up. We can talk trash, but let's not talk about family members. But we're good, man. I forgive you. We good. Mm. All right, Rambo, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now we're talking about the Dolphins. And as I say, you know, the AFC, it, it, it looks like we're playing everybody that I do not want to have to play. And I just hope they're not all lined up back-to-back -back and right up against each other. Because the NFC West, even though the Hawks have quit, and I could be wrong, it's like Brian Culp and I, we have a phobia about the Hawks. Now, see, that there's something about that uniform, the ambiance, the, the 49ers must drink coffee that they shouldn't be drinking when they get to, to Seattle. <laughs> But I don't, I don't, I'm not assuming anything with that team until I need two years in a row of sweeping the Hawks. I, I don't want to break even with them. I want to sweep them. Then I know for sure, okay, the Hawks' days are over. Okay, I'm not even going to worry about them anymore. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yep. And... Check this out, Rambo. Miami Dolphins, they signed. Uh... I thought the Ank had one of the best offensive lines in football. I still do, top five. But yeah. they lost their left Pro Bowl left tackle, Teron Armstead, to Miami. He's their left tackle. Ar Armstead to Miami? Guard. Armstead's their left tackle. And Connor Williams, Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys' former left guard, is in Miami. <laughs> the whole left five. <laughs> what the uh, hell's uh, going on in Miami? Guard. God. And then they got a. Uh, Michael Deiter out of Wisconsin. You know how I feel about Wisconsin linemen, Rambo. I love them. Uh, third round pick from 2019. They got Robert Hunt from uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Um, he used to block for your running back. Uh, your running back, what's his, what's his name, out of Lafayette. Robert Hunt's a beast too. I don't remember this. For the 49ers? He was with us? It, yeah, your running back. Your starting running back. No, we oh, oh you know, Mostert. You know, I mean, you know, this is what I'm saying. What if Mostert's healthy? Good God. And then they got yep. and they got Tyreek Hill. So even Hill. If all Tool's got to do, he doesn't have to be just throw it deep. Nobody's going to catch <laughs> up with Hill. If he gets a step on him, he's out of here. 
and their right tackle is uh, Eichenberg. Wanted, I wanted to get him in the draft two years ago out of Notre Dame. They got a Notre Dame right tackle, a Wisconsin center. And uh, Robert Hunt used to block for your guy Elijah Mitchell at Louisiana Lafayette. Tony, He's a beast. Tony, let's talk about their defense. Miami's defense wasn't that bad last year. I remember <laughs> that. They looked better than I anticipated. That one game, or, uh, did I see two games? I saw one or two games of that defense. They're pretty active. Uh, they're kind of young, aren't Ray they? Quan Davis. Yep, the defensive ends. Raekwon Davis out of Alabama. I remember him when he came out. Christian Wilkins out, out of Clemson. I wanted us to draft him, and we took somebody else instead. Uh, he was on that, that uh, Clemson defensive line that had three number one picks, though, that year, three years ago. Jordan Phillips, the former first-round pick out of the University of Miami. <laughs> Look at Tony. Tony's, ex- Tony's like looking at Google, man. You, Tony's got information on all of them, man. <laughs> Go, I, Tony. I I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, I got to my Athlons. I'm an Athlons guy. I don't really Google, but um, <laughs> my, my end is going to be good, but I think two is going to hurt him, Rambo. I just – in my gut, Tua is not the guy. That conversation has been going around, too, because uh, yeah. they actually had a chance. And Mike McDaniel has praised Tua and and spoke as if he's got Tua where he wants him. So, you know, I yeah, don't know. We'll see because if they got to pull him, they got Teddy Bridgewater hopefully to save the day for him. Oh, did they? Because remember the conversation of uh, the owner? I don't know. It was the owner GM came out and says, oh, I just want to clear the air. Uh, we are not looking to make a deal for Deshaun Watson and send. Uh, we're, we're happy with uh, our quarterback in Tua. And I, I was, he even made an announcement, so I guess they were in, in the conversation. Because if Deshaun Watson yeah. would have came to that team and wasn't having all the problems he's having, good Lord. Rambo, been... I, did a, I did an analysis on my team last night. Rambo, I really could see the Falcons going 10 and 7. All right. With the top five, yeah, I went game by game. I don't think we're going to beat you guys, by the way. Uh, but uh, you, I, I, I think we can win ten games. I really do. I tell you, you deserve that too. I hope you do. <laughs> you know, because uh, no team should go through mediocrity too long. You know, build up, get back into the game. You know, our team better than the people think with the, our defense. Uh, that's usually what wins games. Well, Tony, we got We got to go. Uh, and I'll, I'll look for you midweek, all right? Yes, Always sir. A not, too much, uh, not too much chatter. In the ch- I, hope, I hope Big Show come on tonight, man. That's my brother. I like Big Show. <laughs> just start trouble. Not, not oh, really give Big Show a break. He wants my to dude. win just like you guys do. He wants to win just as much as you guys do. I agree. Give him a break. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mambo, I will see you midweek, sir. You have a good one. Looking forward. You too, Tony. There he goes. Take care, sir. You too. Night, Tony. Hey, Santana! Santana, how, I mean, I'm, I'm talking a long, on, long time. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> We're sitting back here looking at Frank Gore <laughs> as everybody else. We got, we got four guys. You got Steve, you got Joe, you got Jerry, now you got Frank. Everybody has something to say about uh, the quarterback situation. And, uh, you know. Frank, but Frank does say we're going to the Super Bowl. Now, none of the rest of those guys have said anything about a Super Bowl. Frank says we're going to the Super Bowl. And Santana, we will play the Bills. Any bold predictions uh, you got bills, tonight? Man. I know, right? Because I don't want anything to do with the Bills right now. I ain't want nothing to do with the Bills either, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Santana, there's nothing wrong with respecting strength. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of teams. I don't, I'm not yeah. crazy about playing the Chargers. I don't want to see Russell Wilson with a bunch of good players. I the Raiders I, I, have me worried. I, and I remember, always talk crap about the Raiders. Worried about I, I them worry too. About the Raiders, I, I, I don't worry about the Raiders. They got a better team now. They're legit. Yeah, but <laughs> but Derek Carr's not Aaron Rodgers. So yeah, I know, right? Let's say that, man. You know, so. <laughs> I, I, you know, Derek Carr. He's he's good and everything, but. He he sometimes just chokes in, in some key moments. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know he he's good. He's good, but he just chokes in key moments. And so, but it's got, all good. I mean, but you got him some weapons now, though. I mean, you got you got Waller, yeah. you got Devontae, you got that that slot 
I mean, he's got in his run game. I, I, they still got that running back or not. I don't know. Somebody said he was gone. But uh, he ain't got no excuse now. He messes up now. Nah, they they just get rid of him. Anyways, Rambo, I mean, we are talking about Jimmy or yeah. Trey Lance? Uh, yeah, Jimmy and Trey. And Frank says he, he wants to see Jimmy uh, out there again next year. If, they, if we can't get a first or second round, if we can't get a second round pick or above, Frank says don't even trade him. Don't even think about it. I mean, you know, we have a team, man. We have a team to go to the Super Bowl, you know. I would like Jimmy to stay and let him compete and yeah. and let the you know, let it be, you know. If he has to be if, if Trey beats him out mm-hmm. and Jimmy's the back then that's it, mm-hmm. you know. And I hear a lot of people say that, oh, it's gonna break the locker room, it's gonna do this, it's gonna no, do that. Sad. They're, they're like, stronger than I'm that. I'm pretty sure the players are going to stick to whoever the better quarterback is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I agree. And and it goes and it goes to for, for every sport. I mean, I I, I know you you play sports. I play mm-hmm. sports. Mm-hmm. And you know, just because I know someone that's very uh, very well and he's my friend, you know, I would rather have the good player on the field. You know what I'm saying? They're my yeah. friend. You know, so it, it, it's you know it's it's about the it's, it's about the uh, about winning. You know, so. I think the, the the team and the and the you know the the guys in the locker room they get paid to play you know not to make quarterback decisions and and stuff like that so I think that uh that's how it should be you know a quarterback competition let me see who wins you know and that's a great I, example I truly too. believe that I, I, I love that example you know, yeah. Santana. You know, my bro, man, I hang out with him all the time, but he can't play. I, hey, I'm gonna take this dude here. You know, <laughs> that is the way it goes. That's reality. Yeah. It is. I've, I've, I've been in situations like that. I, I just want to win, you know. It doesn't goes all the way back to high school. You know, so. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, in, in the, you know, these guys pay, get paid millions of dollars to play for whoever's the quarterback. So mm-hmm. I don't think, you know, there'll be a locker room issue, you know. Um, like, we didn't see that with uh, C.J. Beathard when Jimmy G took over, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously – you know, there were some guys that had their opinions about it or maybe didn't like it at the time, but when they saw Jimmy G played well, what happened? They they forgot about CJ, right? Mm-hmm. So Ain't nobody gonna get so mad say, they don't uh, wanna uh, play. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I I think we we have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl if they're both on the team to be honest, Rombo. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, if if for whatever let's say Trey Trey Lance beats out Jimmy and stuff like that, and it's something, you know, knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen, but mm-hmm. Trey Lance, for whatever reason, gets injured when we have a, a good enough quarterback to come in and take over, you know what I'm saying? Other than Nate And Sutton vice Phil. versa, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah, exactly, and then Jimmy, you know, beats out Trey, and for whatever reason, because Jimmy does get injured, you know, mostly every year, you know, we got <laughs> a, year. We got, we, we got a talented quarterback, you know, so yeah. I think, you know, and, and, um, but the thing, the whole thing about this is the contract, man. I, I it just makes it hard. You know what I'm saying? It makes it hard to make to make it a quarterback competition. You know, mm. but if it was to be a situation where Jimmy, you know, restructures his contract and all that, maybe there might be a possibility of that. But you know, and there might be. I, I just don't think you, you. You know, though, how many years you got to extend the contract now to restructure it, right? So now, yeah, Jimmy's got one year left. What? Do you, what, do you, what? How many years would you give him now? Three, two, three. Probably three. His agent won't accept anything less, right? And maybe yeah, at uh, no. twenty mil. Yeah, but the, the thing is that Jimmy probably wouldn't want to stay for that long either. You know, he yeah. Be I, a, I think he wants to go you know, somewhere so. where he can uh, he can be the man. Yeah. So I think I think I think it was gonna. I just, man, it would it would just suck to cut him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's he's a good quarterback. You know, and. For him to land in, let, let's say, Seattle. Or <laughs> That's everybody's fear. Like that. <laughs> mine. Don't put I him mean, it's over not there. Like, it's not like I, I'm worried about it. But I, just I don't still want him over there giving Seattle intel. He's type of good quarterback. Right. You know, exactly. So, I mean, but, you know, when it comes down to Trey, man, I I like Trey. I, I like what I see from Trey. I think he, 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 you know, he's been in the system for a year. Mm-hmm. He sees what it takes to win. He sees what it takes, you know, to come work. Uh, we just got to give the kid a chance. And these players, you know, I, I trust Kyle and, and John, if he's the starter week one, then he's a starter for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, th- I think, you know, what we saw last year from Trey, you know, against Seattle, against Cardinals, and against Texas, we, we saw a progression and we saw, a, 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 you know, a kid that can play. He, can, he could play. He can't he can play, you know. So mm-hmm. it's not like he, 
hey, you know, I guess the Cardinals, he played, when he played the Cardinals, it was, the Cardinals were coming out like one of the best teams in the league at the moment, right? The mm-hmm. number one defense, and they were just lighting up teams, and they played the Niners, and, you know, you watch the game, you know, it, you know, Kyle didn't play a good call for a a, a good uh, game plan for for Trey Lance, and let's not forget how many thirds and third and fifteens and twenty Trey Lance had to had to try to you know needed to complete. But you know, we we lost by seven points, I think, that game. You know, mm. and so you know, I, I I just saw from that game. I just when I watched that game, what I liked about Trey that game was that I never saw, I I didn't see him like like the moment was too big for him. I feel like he, you know, the, when, when he got mm-hmm. tackled and his helmet came off and he tried to get up and try to mm-hmm. keep running, I just saw toughness right there in that yeah. moment. And I- he, he woke up the next day, though, with his knee hurting. So, you know what? This, this is the thing. I'm starting to think Kyle's offense is how people get hurt. <laughs> you know? I, we'll see. I, but, Santana, we, we, our clock ran out on us. I mean, good to hear from you again. I haven't heard from you in such a long time. I mean, I'll be back midweek, though. Wednesday, hopefully. Santana? Lose him? All right. Oh, Ellis! Wombo, can you come right back to me? Yeah, we can do that. All right. I appreciate it. No problem. Hey, 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 Bethel. Bethel. Rumble. Bethel. <laughs> can you hear me? Rumble. I, I can hear you. Bethel, you know, uh, w- 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 Frank Gore mentioned that the 49ers made bold prediction Twitter. Uh, uh, Vegas asked Twitter, so give us your boldest prediction, NFL fans. And Frank Gore stepped right up to the plate. 49ers and Bills Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, it 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 depends because that side of the that side of the playing field, it's a lot harder now because of everybody that's basically bulking up with stars and uh, bulking up with better players. And like last year, it's not like last year where you know you know who's gonna make it to the playoff. This year. You don't know who's gonna make it because of all the great players that yeah, they have, all the great true, players that they're right? acquiring. I have no yeah. Yeah, Bethel, that's a good point. Last year you probably could see there's a there's at least a slight picture of who's going to emerge. But this year, man, there are so many teams in the mix because of some of the things they did in this offseason. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kinda hard to tell who's gonna be you know, in the playoffs and, you know, the, you know, the Bengals had a good run, but, yeah. you know, now teams are going to be hunting for them because they're, they went to the Super Bowl because, you know, they're not going to be taking them lightly either. But Bethel, they're a young so, team that gained in maturity yeah. and they got a better offensive line now. I have a feeling that they're going to be in the mix all the way to the last minute too. Uh, get going into the cool. playoffs. The uh, only cool. reason they actually beat Paxton Mahomes because of what the coach did in the <laughs> second quarter, no, yeah. the first quarter. Yeah. He, if he wanted to, he could have got three points and would have, you know, would have been up a little bit more. And those three points cost him the game and cost him to not go up to the Super Bowl. Mm hmm. So that's the way it goes you know, that's why I football. always say. Yeah. That's why I always say when you have a chance to take the three points, you take the three points. Damn it right. It doesn't matter how many field goals you take, but those field goals could make a big difference. And they, and, and they always I remember, do. Always. I, 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 yeah. I recall that game now that you I, I do remember that part. Yeah. Yeah, because he threw it to Tiger Hill and they stopped him so they didn't get nothing. So he tried to be greedy. If he would have got those three points, or they, probably, they could have probably won that game. And Bethel, they got cocky. Because they only lost by three points. Yeah, well, they, yeah, got, they got cocky. cocky. They, well, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's Pat from Holmes. That's Tyreek Hill. We don't need to kick no field goal. Okay, go ahead. 
Now look at you. And I was laughing, and I, and I, and I told my friend, I'm all like, that's going to cost them, and they're going to probably lose a game because of it, and watch, and it did. So, you know, and because uh, I remember there was, uh, I think it was the uh, Steelers had a bunch of chances to uh, score uh, nine points. But they decided to go for it on fourth down three times instead of taking the three points. Mm. That was nine points off the board. And they would have lost by – or they would have been in the game if they just make a touchdown and that's it. But they decided not to take the three points, and they lost by a lot more. So that's why I say three points make a big difference. Damn right it does. You I know? mean, that's, uh, why, that's why when people keep talking about – us scoring way more points and what you know how hard it is to score way more points every week in the NFL nowadays. Bethel, defenses aren't playing anymore. They're serious. Have you they got a plan yeah. and it's gonna be rough for four quarters. You know how many games were decided last year in the fourth quarter? Actually the last couple of years. It defenses get paid big bucks too. That's what they're getting paid for. Yeah. To make sure that you don't beat them up. Especially if they got any, any amount of maturity. Or any number of guys that are really good, you know? Is it, yeah. It's rough. Yeah, and a, a lot of t- times it depends on the coach, you know, because Strategies. You know, if the coach Always. doesn't call the right play, you know, you can't get any points if you don't dial the right play. So, you or know, you should have went, went for it on fourth and one and you didn't. Or something else, or you went for a fourth to one and got stopped. Yeah. These these all game decisions are what figure into into uh, if whether you win or lose a, a lot. The strategy to begin yeah. with. Yeah. That reminds me of the Chargers when the Chargers played. Uh, I think it was a, the Raiders, and they were going for it on fourth down and <laughs> getting a bunch of first downs, and I was all like. And they keep getting it and getting it. I was all like, damn, like, this coach, you know, he's t- taking a big risk on taking the fourth downs, but they paid, it paid off. Except he kind of fumbled in the end by calling a timeout and still taking the tie. And he ended up not going to the playoffs, but. God, that's got to, that really hurts. You, know, you lose in that yeah. fashion. I'd rather you just beat me outright, score a touchdown or something, but don't make me have a stupid mistake like that beat me. Oh, that was, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a month. Yeah. I can't even think about that all the time. <sighs> yeah, and, uh, and actually a, a known fact that I actually found out, and it's kind of funny, and it's kind of acquiring the, uh, the Lions. Uh, did you know that the Lions – have their offense is the most paid or the most expensive offense in the NFL, and they're still not good. <laughs> I didn't know this. So, the line, they got the highest paid. Yeah, role. that. <laughs> yeah, they have the highest paid <laughs> offense, and they, they hardly didn't win a lot of games. So, that's, hey, look, that's, about the, the Detroit situation has been yeah. mismanaged and ran into the ground. This goes way back, so I'm not. Su- I don't know why I was surprised, man. They don't yeah, know what they're doing. Uh, sometimes, they sell it. even though you have the most expensive line, if they don't gel or they don't play right, or you know you don't know how to coach them, you know to do certain stuff, you're not you gonna lose. do anything. Yeah, you have a bunch yeah, of angry millionaires running around there saying, "I, I need to be traded." Yeah, well, I, I've been trying to trade you for a wet yeah. month. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Beth, we're going to run out of time. Uh, you know that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let, me, let me see you midweek. Well, I'm hoping to be back by Wednesday. All right, Rumble. Like always, great show. Thanks, man. Punch the like and let's go nice. Indeed. <laughs> Bethel, always great. Right. Talk to you later. And here he is. He is one half. Members that found TNT, he is Dre from VA. Finally. And I do mean 
Finally. <laughs> I already gave him his intro. He don't need to do it again. GB Bull, yes. It's a Jimmy Garoppolo mug. I, I, I drink from it with pride. Finally. And? And I do <laughs> mean, can, can you hear me, Rob? Okay. Hey, clearly. I yeah. do mean finally. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I didn't see you. You, you know, snuck Rob, up on me today. I didn't see you in the chat. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's did it on right. purpose, this did you? Sneak there attack. he is. You weren't going to see this one coming because you've been ducking that Monday night raw smoke, so you're going to get it on Sunday night heat. Now you know, night. you're right. Now, shout out to production. Shout out to my TNC family. Shout out to you, brother Rombo. But let's, the nicey trees are over. As a matter of fact, Rombo, if you don't mind. Yeah. I gotta talk. I've got to talk to somebody special tonight, and I need to do it in a special way. And so now, I need you. It is time for another one of those golden moments where we announce. Let me all at you. All right, Trey. Everybody knows you. that every single thing that's said on this airways can and will be used against you. <laughs> we've all been a victim. We've all we've all been a victim of it. But Rombo. It's for you tonight, sir. It's this always for me when it comes from you now. It's, it's not always for you. Yeah, but no, but normally it won't be a big you show. Said, and <laughs> I quote, because you know, I be paying attention. You know what I'm saying? I be writing it down. So you said, cause shout out to Tony. I like Tony a lot. He calls in. He's not a fan of the Niners, but he, he be bringing the heat. Which um, Tony? But Tony, about? <laughs> um, Tony from GA. I, I want to make sure that we get that right. Tony from GA. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, see, uh, he said the Dolphins are looking real good, but he's not sure about the quarterback. And you replied with, he don't got to be good. Funny you say that. Funny you well, say that. I don't, I didn't, I, oh, no. uh, I didn't mean it. I didn't say it in that fashion. I'll give you a chance to. No, I'll give you, before I say what I say. Go I'll ahead. Give, Let me see what you got to say. Like he, that he but, keep in mind, he's paraphrasing. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rombo. You have bent over backwards to make it seem like Trey Lance has to be first team all pro, number one quarterback with the most passing yards, fewest interceptions, no turnovers, no mistakes. No, when no, no, really, no. in I've actuality, never said that. we are better than the Dolphins, Rombo. We are better than the Dolphins. Did that, there's a so comparison made between us and the Dolphins? Oh, that's what you're saying. You're, you, you're linking I, what I said what I'm saying. to mean, I'm okay. Hold on, walk with me. Walk yeah. with me. We're yeah. better than the Dolphins. So if the Dolphins quarterback don't got to be good, then what does ours have to be? It's a troll. Yeah, we're off that. We're off that segment, Rob. But this, this, you, I, I just when I heard that, when I heard you say that, I just said that is so ironic. Well, you took me out of context, like you normally do. Here's what oh, I meant by I, that. I, uh, Trey, he's got look who he's surrounded by. Trey's surrounded by the same thing, but at least two has got a couple of years playing. I, uh, a lot of us oh, don't think that whoa, Trey needs any whoa. experience. Tua huh? has started in the NFL for exactly like. Eight to nine more games than than Trey has. That's not a lot. It's not a full season. So let's not act like two is a seasoned vet. Eight guy to just nine got more off a games. Hip. Trey, what's wrong he with He just got math? off a broken hip. I he need you to go back to class hip. and do some studying. Huh? That's not. How true. many games has Tua started, Rambo? How many games has Tua violated? Well, he's got more than eight or nine. Then. I mean, he's got more than eight or nine. No, no, I, I didn't say eight actually, or I'd nine. I'd like to. I'm saying no, eight or nine okay, it's more. It's called hyperbole, Rambo. <laughs> Tua has not started. And hey, you've got a lot of that season. on the day. Your name a is hyperbole. But I call it. Rambo. I call it when it is hyperbole. You over here saying that Tua doesn't need to be good, but Trey Lance needs to be amazing, and I just don't think. I didn't say Trey Lance had to be amazing. I also said about um, Trey, he needs your energy, Rambo. You don't say it. I you said are the thing a savvy, is, people, people, please don't believe it. Rombo is a savvy, media trained, innuendo laced, clever MC, master of ceremony. Can I, do not can I just, be fooled. Do not be dismayed, people. Can I just, when he I does just want to say one thing. It's, it's an something. inference. It's, you never say it, Rombo. It's Trey, an inference. I said that. Uh -huh. You don't, and, and in Kyle Sanchez's system, the quarterback is not uh -huh. actually in a position to do uh -huh. all the heavy lifting. I said that many uh -huh. a time. Mm -hmm. And you this is why when people put That's the spotlight on Jimmy, I said, say, you know, this team oh, okay. is a – Kyle 
runs this team in a way that's going to – everybody yeah. has to do their job. He just doesn't do so, like Belichick and tell people, all I'm do, saying do your is job. This, Rombo, but hold on, hold on. You said something else, though, because that, that was exhibit A. You know, that, that's why I didn't want to get <laughs> He's got a whole case. All right, go ahead. <laughs> you said that it takes a special kind of quarterback to run Kyle's system. You, that's, that's what you've been going with. Well, that's, that's true. That's what you've been going with. No, I, it does, I, right? I, I, I agree with that. So, I, I did, you, if I did, even consider, if I didn't say that, I want to say it now. Okay. You know, so I, system, I, need some of my, I need some of my older fans to ride with me, not the younger ones. We're going to go back to 2010, 2008, 2009. Um, would you say Sage Rosenfels is a special kind of quarterback? Because he seemed to run Kyle's quarterback uh, system Sage, pretty well. So did Matt Schaub. Sage, Sage Rosenfeld. Rosenfeld. We're talking about the Houston Texans. We're talking about the Houston. Go ahead, jump in your Google machine. Um, we're talking about <laughs> Matt Schaub. I wasn't paying attention we're talking back about then. Matt Schaub. Hold on, hold on. Let me give you Schaub some other quarterbacks. Actually, wasn't Schaub pretty good? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm about to say, let me give you some other quarterbacks. Hold on. What about Derek Anderson? Would you say he's a special kind of quarterback? These guys remind me a lot of one guy that I know that used to start for the 49ers Listen, that won't be starting this Before year. you get off into this, uh, did uh-huh. those people win? A lot of them went to the playoffs. Matt Schaub went to the playoffs. Oh, Derek yeah. Anderson went to the playoffs. This is Wait, hold on, this that's is, what Jimmy so G no matter, did. He hasn't no won anything. No matter how you want to. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. What are we winning? What are we winning exactly? What are we talking about when we say have they won? Are you talking about regular season games? Or are you talking about? No, championship? I mean, were those, were, those guys, were those guys winning under Kyle? And that's a long time ago. In we don't celebrate regular. We Kyle's, have celebrated regular season victories for far too long around here. Let's call it what it is. What does that sound like? Okay, okay. Let me just add this to that. Then, well, do we have any regular season wins before twenty seventeen? None. We didn't have any. We but have we as many kinda, championships uh, as we had before then. We're, but after Harbaugh left, what do we look like? We weren't having no regular season wins go. in. We weren't there celebrating. And Jimmy no G rode season. in on his white horse all by himself. The team didn't get better. No, the team didn't get better at all. We're still the same team as two thousand seventeen, right, Rombo? The only person we had was Jimmy, right? He's the only one we had. Okay, now, he made I everybody not, better. I had never said he that. He put us all on his back. Okay. Yeah, I never said that. 2017, That's though, yeah. Saying. No, no. Jimmy did actually make a difference that year in that capacity. You're right. Jimmy's leadership made it's those guys play That's half a way above ago. their head. 2022. That's half a decade ago. You said 2017, right? That's five years ago. Half a decade. Are we going to update our resume or are we still going to live off the past? Because it's not for long. What have you done for me lately? What's going on now type of league? And what's Trey, going on now is this, 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 If we're playing a chess match, I just got you on this. Look, okay. the two years Jimmy Garoppolo was healthy, what the hell happened? Two out of five? <laughs> what the hell happened? Yeah. <sighs> Rombo, I love this, though. But no, I didn't even want to stay on Jimmy G tonight, but I know we don't have long, so I'm going to get out of here before production comes. <laughs> you know? should, it is kind of big. I know exit. it's coming next. <laughs> I know it's coming next. Nah, I know the hook is coming, you know? So, nah, I appreciate you. But I will say this. One last thing. This <laughs> offense, I love your case, just say this offense, It was cute. This offensive line mm-hmm. is going to be better because when an offensive line is struggling, when you're able to make – extra couple of seconds when you're able to make extra couple of plays when you're able to move a little bit when the pocket can we, 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 mm-hmm. we're getting back to rollouts mm-hmm. and boots when we can do that it's going to help a, a young offensive line and i think i think we're going to be pleasantly surprised and another thing stop worrying about who we got to play patrick mahomes aaron Rodgers. did we not just go to lambo hey, i don't think Cowboys we play the, the packers this year. they got to play us on defense rombo nobody talks about this and this is why we upset a lot of people because they don't talk about us enough. They're who we got to play. No, they got to play us. And we back to that type of mentality. We had that mentality with Harbaugh, with that defense. And I don't think it ever there. left. You... All right, man, I'm up out of here, man. We... Shout out to KC. <laughs> Shout out to my brother's show. <laughs> I know we got to go. All right, brother. I love you, man. I'll tell you what, I'll look for you midweek. And bring your next case. They love... have to play us. Yeah. All right? All right. <laughs> Don't make me wait now. I'll be looking for you. I'll be, I'll be looking for you Wednesday. Maybe even Tuesday. All right. All right, Trey. <laughs> and here he comes, the Austin, the Cowboys fan. The guy, he may be one of the most lovable Cowboy fans I've ever talked to. Austin. What's up, Bombo? <laughs> Austin, we're sitting here tonight making predictions. Austin, have Odds makers give it to Cowboys, I, and you probably know. Are uh, the Cowboys going to the playoffs this year? In fact, I've heard several arguments about that. Uh, you should win the NFC East. And this year. Funny you should say. 
Mm-hmm. Funny you should say that, Rombo. The Eagles are actually favored in our division. <laughs> I heard that argument, too, on ESPN. The Eagles have done enough now to give the Cowboys a run for the money, and, of course, people couldn't wait to go ahead and say they were going to win the East. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Vegas has this as, uh, I think, 15-1 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl this year. 15-2. to 1. There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah, I, I have to say this, Rombo. Rombo, yeah. I'm hearing all these conversations about, you know, whether Trey Lance, if if he could be that guy to get y'all, you know how how Frank Gore's predicting the Super Bowl will be the Bills and Forty Niners. Mm-hmm. I say, why not run it back with Jimmy Jimmy G? He's proven he could get you all there. Well, Frank Gore said the same thing. And and I, I just don't think, personally, in my opinion, I may be wrong on this, but do you think do you do you see Trey Lance going into Tampa Bay, Green Bay, or going in maybe to to L.A. to beat those teams in the playoffs to get you all to a Super Bowl? You know, honestly, or is it? I, uh, I I have my reservations about that. I, I, I'm I like Frank and everybody else that knows how this game works. You need time, a little, especially when you're only 21. <laughs> you haven't got any – you haven't played enough football, especially at this level, to come in and just start dominating. It's going to take a minute. But, you know, I will say this. Kyle's a damn good coach, and I suspect – for all the things that Kyle has learned in the last few years, he's probably going to know how to play Trey. He didn't know how to play him last year. He may know how to play him now in a way where it's advantageous for his amount of football knowledge as far as the NFL goes, I'm hoping. Well, my thing is, Bombo, is, is the NFC is still loaded. You've still got Tampa Bay there. Green Bay's probably still going to be there. New Orleans is going to be healthy again. Yeah, yeah. Arizona, Arizona might be good. No. You got the Super Bowl champions. I mean, I mean the yeah. NFC is no the pushover. Rams. Yeah, yeah. You know what? As bad, as bad as we talk about the Rams, most of us 49er fans, in the back of your mind, you know it's as long as they got Aaron Donald. And a couple other guys out there. Their defense is going to be legit. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where we we have been beating them every year. So, you know, you don't want to all of a sudden start losing to them because they're already in here talking a lot of trash now. So, you know, if we lose to them this year, it's going to be hard to live with these people. And like the AFC, Rombo, it doesn't get any clearer on that side either. I mean... You've no, got no, no, the Chiefs, no. the Bills, the Bengals, Ravens. No, it goes I on think and the on. Steelers will be good. I mean, the AFC is ridiculous. But, but in my personal opinion, if I had to pick a Super Bowl right now, yeah. I would think it would be be the Buccaneers and Chiefs again. <laughs> would you? Explain. Okay, so whenever you have Tom Brady at quarterback, yeah. you're always in contention. Yeah, that's true. You, you never doubt that. You never doubt that man. And then for the Chiefs, the reason why I say the Chiefs is until someone proves to me they can they can beat the Chiefs consistently. They they kind of remind me of New England, like the years that they played Denver and and the Colts, and then what happened the next year? They go back to the Super Bowl, and or they win the Super Bowl. I kind of see Kansas City stepping into that. You know, they, they took a big hit with Tyree Kill, though. You know, you, you take a, a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or Mahomes or Brady, if you take Gronk away from Brady, uh, you, you get a little different product. You take Tyree Kill away from Mahomes, now he hasn't got that lethal weapon uh, that he had before. Now you've watered, They've been diluted a little bit, though, Austin, and, and now they might be a little more vulnerable. Um it's going to be hard. This this year is going to be hard to pick. I don't. Did you guys pick up anybody in Dallas to to help uh, Dak? Because I know you lost one wide uh, receiver, but C.D. Lamb looks like he's legit. Not really. We paid Michael Gallup 
five years, sixty-two million dollars. <laughs> well, I do remember that contract. <laughs> I got, but, I'm a good ball player, I though. I must say, he is. He's a thousand yard, ten touchdown receiver when he's healthy. Yeah. I'll ask you this last question, Rob, before I go. All right. Do you honestly believe, as it sits today, if Jimmy G is the quarterback, do you believe y'all are going to the Super Bowl? It may sound like a stupid question, but no, I just want to hear your opinion that's, on That's it. not a stupid question. I, If Jimmy G is the quarterback, I do believe in my heart of hearts that they will go to the, the playoffs. So Jimmy – brings something to the table that I'm not sure exactly what it is. His play sometimes is questionable. I'll admit to that. But that team plays hard for Jimmy G. I don't know. And I'm hoping Trey can get that same kind of response. But they do a lot of great things out there on both offense and defense. That's been since he arrived in 2017. Our defense all of a sudden got even better even in 2017. So he brings something to the table that isn't real easy to see on paper, but winning, if we go to the playoffs, it's amazing how they get as far as they do. So we're going to see. But I do think Jimmy Garoppolo gives them the best chance to get to play. I'm with Frank Gore, Joe Montana, and everybody else that believes. And Jerry Rice has even said they need to compete for that spot. Don't just give it to Trey just because you gave up two first-round draft picks. And, you know, so, yeah. I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate your time, Rumble, and, and always I look forward to, to your next live stream. And I might pick some people off, but go Cowboys. <laughs> Look, if we find you entertaining, Austin, have a great night. We'll see you next time. You too. Uh, yeah, anytime, no matter what TV for, if you're not rude, we, we're 49 fans, we're nice people. We don't get mad at people. Just Now, the Rams fans, some of them are very rude. Ready to go is out of line 90% of the time. So, you know, he gets the treatment he gets from us. We can be nasty when we have to be, but we're not going to be just, we're just not nasty people. Hey, hey, Howard. Yo, what's up, big dog? Hey, oh, Howard. Oh. Ah, Howard, man, hey. This is a Frankie Gore's guy that's going to the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, which is, which is interesting because they, Twitter, uh, a, a, a place in Vegas called Bovado said, hey, Twitter fans, who's going to the Super Bowl? So Frankie jumped up and said, all right, 49ers versus Bills. I said, it is bold. You know. <laughs> you know. Damn. You know, you know, ironically enough, that's exactly why I picked coming out of the AFC is the Bills. Bills, yeah? Man, yep. that's going to be, they're going to come out bloody and wounded, too. It's like whoever gets to play the AFC champion, it's probably going to win because whoever comes out of that is going to be so battered and bruised. They, they, they got nothing left. Oh, that the AFC is crazy. Whoo, damn. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be it's going to be a interesting season for sure. And uh, I mean, it's not far fetched to see maybe the Niners come out of the NFC to be in the Super Bowl. We got the personnel. It, it's a matter of us yeah. staying healthy, Howard. Every year we get there, at least a percentage of the of the of, of the front line guys go down every year. Maybe this will be the year where that doesn't happen, or we recover quickly. But my God, every year somebody got a little voodoo down on them on them guys <laughs> for some reason. I, R- I don't Rams. know, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got to get them. You got to get, got to find where them dogs are, man. Damn. That's all I'm saying, but, you know what I'm saying? But, to, um, to pick you off what he said, the last caller, about Trey Lance. Mm. Um, you know, oh, we believe in Jimmy can take us back, you know. I mean, one thing about I can say about all the 49ers fans, at least the majority of them, mm-hmm. who feel like Jimmy, Jimmy should be the guy to start. Okay, everybody's fearing the unknown. Everybody's fearing, oh, we don't know what he can do. He may not do it. He may fail, and he's gonna be a plus. Da, 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 da. And, okay. and that goes for every rookie quarterback. Yeah. You know, that's nothing unusual about that. But you're, you're right. That is the fear. Yes. So, can we refresh everybody's memories? Um, there was a quarterback we had named Colin Kaepernick. First year came out. 
Nobody thought he can go to New England, go be out duel Tom Brady. Nobody knew he can go into Atlanta, come back 17 nothing, and win the game. Hell, even Baltimore in the Super Bowl came back, rallied the troops. Yeah, we lost, but we it, we had a chance, and it was because of him. So, <clears throat> how are they? And, but one question though, and we can't, and we, and, and, and yeah. we can't, and we, and we can't forget about Colin went to Green Bay, zero degrees, <laughs> no sleeves. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We 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 get it. It's an unknown. It's an unknown. Okay, but sometimes yeah. we just gotta just gotta just just see what happens and yeah, not he, just be it, pessimistic. But, but Howard, the, the only thing is when when Kaepernick came in, he did come on guns of blazons. Actually, he was out of the pistol, wasn't he? He did come in guns of blazing. It was immediately effective. We didn't really see that with Trey, so it was there was no, you can't really make that kind of comparison, you know. He needs more time to come out there and show what he can do. But Colin, like you're saying, the Chicago game when Alex went down, sh- Colin came like, yeah, give me the ball and went to work. You know, we didn't see that, so it was a different feel. I understand. I understand what you're saying. I I see where you're coming from, but he still was an unknown. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody nobody was putting all these expectations on Colin. Mm-hmm. Like they and, are and, and running right quarterbacks of that style, that style, man, the league did not know what to do with Cap. <laughs> Whoa, they did not yeah. have a clue. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, they didn't have no no clue. He destroyed the Packers. He embarrassed oh, them. Oh wow, that was nasty. He embarrassed them. <sighs> he loved every second of it too. Oh God, yes, <laughs> that was fun. Loved every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> Kissing his biceps in the end zone every few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, get him, yeah, Cap, yeah, get him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. So, so my thing is, what? Let me ask you this: Do you think that Trey Lance is able to go on the road and beat somebody that's a worthy opponent? Oh my God. See, I gotta, I gotta be consistent. Right now, I, I uh, you know what though, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just him, and and that, we've seen the 49ers, right. and, and Kyle does do, and his system does work sometimes. So it's not always reliant on just the quarterback play. So it doesn't. I don't. I really can't answer that yet. I, what I need to know is how well he does execute when he does execute, because what I saw in the last season. He looked like a rookie that needed some more time, but he wasn't awful. Uh, just I, I, there was no, I couldn't get real excited because I've seen a couple of things I liked, but I haven't seen enough yet to make me think that I'm going to take him on the road uh, to play the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Broncos, Baltimore, uh Green Bay, Green Bay. I'd rather see him play Green Bay than any of the rest of those teams. So, because Pete Devontae's gone, we got your ass now. But you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> to be to be to be to be real with you, man. I don't know why you're so scared of the Chargers. Why are you so scared of the Chargers? Because their defense. You know what? People don't give their defense enough. Their defense Haven't they got that? Not, their de- go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Good. Haven't they got that madman that uh, everybody wanted to draft that year, playing uh, safety and linebacker? Man, that dude, uh, is, if he's healthy this year, charges is going to be rough. Uh, we'll see. I'm not scared of that defense. Because I'm worried about I, I, most of these teams I'm talking about. I'm concerned about the defenses. I know their offenses are potent, but their defense is the ones that we have to worry about because Trey's on that side of the ball. And there's some things that are going to require a good offensive line. There's going to be some things that are going to require him to make decisions really quickly, whether to, to bail on a play or run on a play or, or get rid of that ball quickly. I'm not sure what Kyle's going to have him doing. I, you know, I'd better be able to answer this question after week one. I don't know now. Oh yeah, of course. You know, but I'm not scared. I'm not. I'm not worried about any defense in that division other than Denver. And to be honest, they're the only legit elite defense in that in that division. Kansas City's defense weak. Kansas <laughs> City's 
you know, they, they lost them in speak already. So mm-hmm. Chargers, they've been mediocre last year. I'm sorry. They're, they're no, they don't scare me. And the Raiders, eh. <laughs> I'll be mean, really, are we really scared of these, these guys? You know, I mean, Denver, I can understand. I, I'll never admit it in front of certain people about the Raiders. I, I do have a little respect for them now because of what they've done in the last few months. But you know what? They oh, still got to oh, beat their ass. Yeah. I still respect I, I respect their offense. I respect their offense. Their defense, eh. Uh, they haven't changed nah, anything on that defense much either, have they? Not really. Because that's how the Raiders all. lost most of their games. Their defense wouldn't wouldn't hold nobody. Exactly. They just they just you know they show up here and there and then boom they just just throw a bomb on them mm. and it's over. Yeah. So, so you know. But don't be so don't be so worried, Rombo man. We got you, bro. We got yeah, you, brother. Yeah, yeah. I, my man Trey, my man Trigger Trey got you, bro. I know, he you know. told you do not be do not be worried. Do not be worried of No, they got to be scared of us, too. You know what? You're right. They got yeah. Teams got to be scared of us, too. Our defense ain't no joke. Uh, you know, it, it's just a matter of the, 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 the fact that those teams look so grisly. And that week after week, there's no let-up next year. Everybody's going to be rough. You know, we can beat them up. And they got to deal with us as well. But still, I'd like to have a couple of games where you cruise into places like Detroit. You know, it stops there. There's not any – I can't name any other team. And Detroit has done things on their defense that they're no longer a pushover. Hey, wait. Howard. Seattle. We could whoop the, – the Hawks ain't got no defense. Of course. Of course. That's why they don't show up in the chat no more. They know they ain't got nothing. Yeah, yeah man. Ain't no more. Ain't, they gone. Oh, the last bit of that, that last – Seattle run is gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. You're never coming back. You know? Russell gone. Bobby gone. Mm. It's all rap. And it's all rap. And that defense they got now with, uh, you know, one dude playing the safety trying to play edge rusher, that ain't enough. So I ain't scared. <laughs> Are you talking about the guy that they traded like the first Jam- rounder for? Or I'm not, no, Jamal, Jamal. They gave up Jamal, everything um, for Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I almost <laughs> forgot. I forgot he played there. I'm Everybody sorry. forgets because Jamal ain't playing half the time. When he's playing, he's not making any difference. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, Jamal! What's the name? George Kill loves <laughs> playing against that's, him. <laughs> exactly. Just, that's the other. Yeah. That Seattle defense looking like garbage truck juice <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, they do. I, I have no, I have no love and respect for them right now. They, but, they you, but, but, but how? Right. But, but I, I am. I need to beat them first because it's I, something goes off in my mind as soon as I see that ugly colored uniform and then running around and peak <laughs> Carol or chewing gum so hard you can see it all the way across the field. You know, <laughs> the only thing with that team, man. I don't mean because I don't have no minutes beating us as many times as they did. I don't know they beat us, but it, it, mistakes <laughs> like that. That special teams play touchdown. See us? I said you got to be kidding me. How in the hell do we not see that come? And then they fired the special teams coach too. too. So you know, that just didn't make no sense. They come up with the right thing at the right time. Mother, I mean. I'm trying not to say bad words, but I just, God, <laughs> just unbelievable. You show great respect there. You know, God, you show great respect, but I almost passed out during that game when Nick Mullins, when when Nick Mullins beat them, yo. Yeah, oh, right. man, I think the whole, I think all four out of fans was celebrating that day. We was. I was so delighted. Oh my God! <laughs> I haven't got no other pledge feeling. brought up. How are we going? That was, the first, that was the first time we beat him. That was the first time we beat him. And we had, that's, that's the first time we beat him in years. Out. Home or yeah. on the road. We hadn't beaten the Hawks in ever. God. Russell Wilson was out and, there, too. And, that's what made me feel even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, we get, exactly. We get, exactly. We're really having fun with the good old days. Howard, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to look for you Wednesday or Tuesday. I'm going to try, try to get back Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, we. Try to get it in, man. Looking forward to it. Always love talking to you. <laughs> All right, Phil. All right, my big dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he does that. <laughs> All right, Howard. Uh, All right, thank you, man.
Are, are you kidding me? It's A.B. Colts fan? We haven't talked to him. A.B., come on in with your 49 loving self. You ain't fooling nobody. <laughs> His dad is a 49ers fan. And A.B., being the insolent child he was, decided not to root for the 49ers. He roots for the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> A.B. A. The Indianapolis Colts, <laughs> the ones with Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton, the ones who got destroyed by the Patriots in the AFC Championship. Ah, oh, I just <laughs> <laughs> hey, but listen, you did, you forgot to mention last year's meltdown with Carson Wentz against the Jaguars. And who the meltdown with Carson Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> and Philip Rivers retiring. <laughs> I was watching that game, though, last year with Carson Wentz. He looked confused and baffled. I said, Jesus, look at that thing. Yep. They've got Carson. They got into his head. Look at him on the sidelines. And Carson was standing there isolated because nobody wanted to talk to him. And the, and the owner was saying, yep. things like, I want that bleep off of my team right now. I said, ooh, I guess Carson's leaving this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carson left, man. I'm glad he's gone, man. I'm, I, I don't know. That guy, Carson Wentz, he, he did some a lot of mistakes. I mean, he reminds me of Jimmy. He accepts. He's like, he can't get you in the playoffs at all. But at least Jimmy gets to the playoffs, though. So, you know, and, and you know, unlike, I don't know, Carson, he came out of, he came into the league, looked like he was really going to be special, though. So I don't know what's going on with him. Yeah, he did come in the league ready to be special. And then that injury that he got against the Rams, ooh. And it was, if you see that, like, clip back, it was bad. Well, I saw I mean, it. He snapped his leg. Hit him. Yeah. Snapped it. And it just looked brutal, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that changed. That that left the mark because that changed. That changed his career." That's, in but you my know, opinion, I, that I was could, like how many years ago? And Carson, his leg wasn't bothering him. He's making bad judgments. Carson would throw. I don't know who he's throwing to, I, and that's why you know people talk about Jimmy throwing ints, but Carson his ints are even more ridiculous. Carson's is in the grip of three guys, right? He's on his way to the ground. Yeah. He throws the ball. I don't even know where he saw a forty. I mean, a, a, a Colts jersey. He throws it, and of course, <laughs> the Colts got the ball. The other Colts team got the ball. So why did Carson do that? I see people get on Jimmy. That was worse than Jimmy's ever done. That's what. Oh, where are you talking about the pick six against the Titans? You talking about something else? Well, that that's one of them. But he, that's not the, that was the first time I seen Carson doing that, forcing throws where he just sort of just take the sack. Just go down, Carson. It's over. That looked like Stafford. No, Stafford did that against. Oh the no, Titans no, Stafford. Too. That's another story. See, <laughs> and and somebody yeah. said Stafford's going to the Hall of Fame. If uh, let, let, let let's see who's voting. I I don't know if Stafford's the first ballot Hall of Famer. We was only yeah. one one Super Bowl. Yeah, well. You know, I don't know. How many years was he in Detroit? And everybody's, poor Stafford, he didn't have anybody to play with in Detroit. <laughs> yep. Oh, guy, I don't know. Is that a reason? Uh, Stafford, yeah. I don't know, man. Stafford's just, uh, he, he's good. No, he no, is. he's good because obviously they're, they're in the Super Bowl. And, you know, Cooper Cup was the, Cooper Cup was the main reason they won that Super Bowl, yeah, in my I, opinion. And, I I, I, and you fun. got my you got my support on that. You know, Cooper Cup had a banner year. And by the way, AB Cooper Cup did things to uh, to uh, Kwan Williams that he hasn't been able to do for years. That's why Kwan lost a step last yep. year because normally Cooper Cup does not burn him all game long like that. He may get one here and there, but as far as just Having a career night? No. So, you know. No, no. Against K1? Yeah, so he got away that But, uh, Rombo, I want to talk about the main topic today because I heard from a little birdie that Jimmy G is thinking about going to the Bucks to play backup for Tom Brady. No, they, they also – you got to go back and read. There's more articles here. There's, no, there's one article that's quoted, there is no chance – of Jimmy G going to, to the Bucks. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Damn. I was like, for a moment, I was gonna be like, really, the Bucks are getting him? 
You know, no, that would have been paid. good for you guys. But, if Jimmy, you know. Did, you know what though? It may be possible if they could like renegotiate a, some kind of a, a contract. I mean, Jimmy would be awesome behind Tom Brady, actually. But you don't, you don't want you're not paying him twenty six million dollars. Oh no! Uh, like that would go into uh, that would be debt for you guys, right? I don't even know how much money that Tom's getting paid. Because <laughs> Tom doesn't need money. His wife makes more money than he does. And Tom makes more money yep. than everybody does on endorsements alone. So, you know. Uh, oh, wait. No, he's good. What is he talking about? Well, I was Tom just saying, he doesn't, need any, Tom doesn't need any money. I was just wondering, if, if Jimmy's 26, is it more than Tom's getting paid over in, in Tampa Bay? Yeah. And also, uh, Rambo, I also wanted to talk about, like, another topic, too. Do you think that the NFC West is the most, if you could say this, because the NFC right now is in a, in a poor state compared to the AFC, do you think that the NFC West would be the most competitive division in the NFC currently? No. No, the Hawks are in the no? NFC. No? In, in the NFC. Oh, the NFC, you're saying? Oh, that's yeah, a good best question. Yeah, division in the NFC. Okay. NFC I, th- I was talking about the NFL. Um, I, you know, that's a good question. I would because, say yes. Yeah, how come? Let me look, okay, let's because, the, the okay. NFC East. Okay, the, the NFC East is not power. Well, NFC East. You know what? It depends on how the Washington team looks. That Washington team with the Wentz, you know, Wentz. Oh, that's team. right, huh? Okay, yeah, so take Wentz, the NFC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take them out of the equation. Uh, NFC South. Okay, you got NFC South is pretty good. NFC South may be it. Yeah. There's no real I mean, weak team NFC in that. NFC South, okay, okay, who you got? You got the Falcons. Oh, they're in rebuild, right? You got the Panthers. I mean, they got Baker Mayfield drama. I don't know about that. And then you got the Saints and the Bucks. So, two at least decent teams are, you know, mo- above decent in my opinion. <sighs> but, I mean, I, for, when you look at NFC West, you got, okay, you got the 49ers. I Rams mean, and Hawks. Rams, Hawks, and Cardinals. You got the Rams who won the Super Bowl. Then you got the Cardinals. Uh, they're, okay, I'll say this. They're a pretty good team. I'll say they're better than yeah. the other third places like Panthers, yeah. Bears. The uh, Cardinals, you, 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 don't know, you don't know how long they're going to last and what team's going to be in from time to time. As long as Cliff Kingsbury's over there, I think they're going to be that kind of a team. Carson Wentz has been found out. I mean, not Carson Wentz, but Car- uh, Kyler Murray. Kyler, Kyler Murray's Murray. kind of been, yeah. been figured out. <laughs> And also, Deshaun, uh, D-Hop, I don't know about him. He got hurt last year and was out the whole season just about, right? A lot of these guys are getting older, and they're not able to take pain anymore for any length of time. That's a good question, though. Who's the NFC's best division? I like that. And, and I mean, that's hard. I mean, when you go to the AFC, that's really hard. Like, who's the best division in the AFC? AFC West. I mean, yeah, you could say AFC West. Yeah. But then you have AFC North over here, who's also like heating up. So okay, look, I mean, let's I look at the AFC AFC North for a second because we're almost out of time. But listen, you 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 got uh, you got the Belichick guys. You got Miami that's like retooled to look pretty scary. Um, yeah. Who else is in that division? Wait, Patriots? which one? AFC. I'm AFC North. Oh, Am AFC I, North. Oh no, you're Dolphins, about Jets. Oh, you got the Jets. <laughs> No, the Jets in the Buffalo. The Jets, the Bills. Buffalo. Yeah. It yeah, is Buffalo. the AFC North that's tough. Other than the Jets. Or and you no, don't know what the Jets uh, going to do this year. You're talking about the AFC East. Like, that's the AFC East division. Is that East? Did I, did I mix them up? Yeah, that's hey, East. Oh, yeah. Who's in the North? The North is the Ravens, the Browns, Steelers, and the Bengals. Ah, see, you know what? I, that's why I'm glad they're going to beat each other up bloody. Oh, you guys are in that division, yep. aren't you? <laughs> God, the AFC is just ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. They're There's ridiculous. No place to hide. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're crazy. Man. Now, hey, anyways, I know you got to go around, but yeah. you know, I don't want to take any of your time. But I was it's always fun to talk to you. Talk with you. Say hi to your dad. And, uh, I guess we'll, 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 the season's getting ready to get started. I guess we'll hear from you more often. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Rombo. Have a good, have a good night. You too, A.B. And, hey, hey, Steven. What's up, Rombo? 
Stephen, man, you know, because I, 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 I didn't want to talk about. I, actually, I've been sidestepping Jimmy today, even a little bit, but not really. But Jimmy's always going to be involved when in time to talk 49 football in the off season. There's just no way around it. But uh, Frank Gore didn't help things by coming to reps, and I said, you know, I wonder what made Frank add that part to the conversation. But Stephen, you know. You know, I, I, I kind of agree uh, with Frank. I'd like to see Trey get more polished, but where is he going to get it from unless he's not unless he's playing? <laughs> so, you know. That's the trade-off, Rumble. We either start the kid, let him get, you know, his licks in from the mm. NFL, or we sit him back down on the bench and he'll mm. never get an experience. Uh, it's it's Steven, kind of a tough situation going into, do, I mean, the QB room. Go ahead. Do you, do you, one question. Do you remember what Aaron Rodgers looked like after he came off? The bench after Favre? Does anybody – I can't remember. What did Rodgers look like in his first year? And to be honest, no one really remembers Rodgers up until he won the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I should tell you how good he did. Right I'm trying there. to remember. What did Rodgers do his first year coming off uh, – finally come, after three years sitting on the bench? But anyway. I can't remember. Yeah. It was, obviously it wasn't good enough because, I mean, nobody remembers how he really was. I, well, he wasn't kicking. He but, wasn't raising hell. I don't think until he finally got to a place, and you know they got to build a team around him and that type of thing. So I don't know. Was, you know, but anytime somebody well, comes off the bench, and Jimmy came off the bench, but it was after three years. Um, it wasn't nearly four, and uh, it was it, around it, three. But yeah, seasoning is is not a bad at, thing on the bench. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, Rambo, the the issue with. It was, okay, so the issue with Jimmy and Tom Brady at the Patriots was that Tom Brady, you know, you could you could rely. The coaching team, the coaching staff, the whole organization could rely on Tom Brady mm-hmm. to do good during the season. They don't have to worry about him tanking. So Jimmy G had the proper, you know, seasoning he needed on the bench to kind of get ready to adjust to start mm-hmm. when Tom Brady got suspended for six games. The situation here at NSF is do or die, you know. Mm-hmm. That's something that we have different from everybody else. We have a decent QB and decent meaning, you know, Jimmy. Three G, years, not about nature, not ahead. two. Get it right. Three. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, I, I could really, it, I mean, really, it's up to you if you really think, you know, if we should start Trey or not. I mean, it's not really up to you, but I mean, your decision is basically just going to boil down to, if he sucks, he sucks. The fans are going to hate him. If he does good, the fans are going to love him. Jimmy G's gone. Mm. So, like I said, we're, we're in a very unique Goldilocks hateful situation where <laughs> you know, we don't know who to go for. You know, we got Captain Saberhill on the bench, and then we have the kid from nowhere. You know? And I'm going I'm to stick to it when I say Jimmy G is Captain Tavo because he loves to force the play when, you know, <laughs> instead of throwing it away, he'd rather risk it and force getting an interception than yeah, he's, you know, actually he, just playing smart. He's got an arrogance about him. But, you know, hey, Steven, but you know when you think about that for a minute, um, would you rather have a quarterback that's overly cautious? You know, Fred Warner uh, and Trey got into it uh, last year. Remember what they were arguing about? And, 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 you know, Trey still says that, that Fred disrespected him. <laughs> but, you know, Trey was trying to be careful. You know what? A quarterback can't be careful. He's, he, he's going to be better off being like Jimmy and Stafford yeah. and everybody else. A quarterback's got to believe in himself because if not, he's not going to take chances. And then yeah. you're going to miss opportunities. I think Jimmy said that last year, too, um, finally. He answered a question like that. And, well, I mean, iron sharp is iron when you really think about it, to be honest. I mean, who would you want better criticizing you, ridiculing you, other than Fred Warner on that team? <laughs> it's Jimmy Warner says he does it, but he doesn't yeah. stand out as Fred Warner. Yeah. No, I was, and they got to hold each other accountable. Uh, from the way Fred was talking, uh, Trey was doing his best to be careful, tentative, missing shots. And they got into it. So, you know, yeah, like, whereas Jimmy, Jimmy don't give a damn. Jimmy sees an opening, I'm throwing it. 
picked off. Oh, Jimmy, what did you see? You know, and then and there were some times though when it wasn't his fault that I really did notice during the time, but most people just think it was his fault. But there's a lot of things that go on in the field that a quarterback cannot be scared though. He's got to go for it. Yeah, that is true. You know, he's got a, he's got a gun it sometimes, but then there's sometimes where it's like you know. Why would you do that, you know, pass downfield knowing damn well you have a spy on you for you to get picked off? Again, believing in himself, over-believing in himself, and arrogance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so there's that. But, I mean, there are some times where the wide receivers just can't catch, you know, or it bounces off of them. Brandon, I used being one of them. I mean, how many times did we think we were going to have a first down or a touchdown? And he throws to Brandon Ayuk, and Brandon Ayuk drops a pass. Or he throws like, it to Jeff Wilson Jr., and Jeff Wilson like, Jr. drops a pass. And like the Cardinals game. Ayuk's about five, yeah. six yards away from the touchdown. Ball hits him in the pads, off to the ground. Who got, who got blamed for that yeah, Cardinal so game? Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Who George else? Kittle, who same he, game. George never fumbles. Catches the ball, runs a few yep. feet, fumbles the ball. Who gets blamed for that game? Jimmy. <laughs> I said, you know, Jimmy's the redheaded test crowd, right? You know, that's why I see. You know what? I'm not going to join this movie. crowd. I got to call it like I see it. Well, Jimmy makes mistakes. I don't mind talking about it. But God, Jesus Christ. If, if he's getting the ball to people and they're screwing up, that's more than just his fault. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, and I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. Do I think he screwed up, you know, in the NFC Championship, that last game? Mm. Oh, that last play? Yes. Absolutely he did. You know, he held on to the ball too long, and then when he was getting tackled, what did he do? He decided to try and Hail Mary. throw it away to someone who was near him. Yeah, yeah. which was which, which is foolish. That was something dumb. I mean, if you're going to hold the ball and take a sack, you might as well just take a sack because we're not coming back anyway. Why try to force it? And, and, and you, you know, do have one more chance, in. even though the times are out. You do have one more chance if you just go ahead. And uh, that was that was bad, no doubt about it. Yeah, he could have th- he could have thrown it out, and it would have been fine. He could have taken yeah. it down, and he would have been fine. It wouldn't have yeah. ended the way it have ended. We still would have had a chance to come back. Yeah. Because we've seen Jimmy, we've seen Jimmy play when the chips are down, where it's like, you know, like okay, we have to do one more play, otherwise we turn it over. And then if he gets that secondary chance, he does. He he's fifty fifty on it. But I mean, why risk it by forcing it on that you know third and one or that thirty five when you could just take that yeah. third down, go on a fourth and one, and then run it or do whatever you got to do to get by. And you know what I, you know what I hope, I hope that wasn't him being frustrated because at that point he was getting no time to throw. The offensive line had just quit. Compton and Brunskill were getting beat on every snap, and the, the Rams were all over the 49ers. I, it's like the offensive line got tired or something. They looked worse and worse as the fourth quarter went down, and pretty soon, if Jimmy didn't have any options, but still. He's a grown ass man. You you know what? You've yeah. been playing this game until it's over. So don't. And then imagine, I mean, real, oh man, like I hate I hate talking about the whole Jimmy thing. It really bugs me because it's the same song and dance. You know, I know. you know, I both agree. With it's like whatever. You know, here we go again, doing this mm. again, round three. But uh, honestly, I'm I'm curious going into the season. I'm curious to see what the offensive line is going to look like. Because we have Aaron Banks, uh, Alejandro Gutierrez, Alfredo mm. Gutierrez, my bad, mm. is still on the team. Supposedly, I mean, if he wasn't good, I don't think he would still be here, which is yeah. kind of a trip. Yeah, you know, and so, also you got you got Matt Mc, uh, Mike McGlinchey back. That that is going back, to be yep. nobody knows what's going to be what's he look like. He's been off for a long time. <sighs> yep, and then Brunskill's still here. Skull's still here. So we're it's all, and I think there's some more added players because I was, I was kind of looking at the whole roster and to see what was going on, you know, see who's on the team, and there are some names that I didn't even see before. I mean, um, like you know, we've never touched up on, yeah, on the 49ers. Oh yeah, some veterans, some you know, uh, one of the undrafted free agents. You gotta get down to 53. There's about 40 guys out there that you've probably never seen. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> heard of. And I was just like, damn. And then. Jermichael Hasty's still on there, so that's my boy. I'm going to keep saying, you know, he's a pretty damn running back, and so he actually does really, really bad. Yep. Yeah, no, so, Michael I mean, is in a running back room that's uh, going to be hard to make. Boy, I tell you, that's – I mean, the 49ers went out and drafted another dude. You know, if they draft a running back, he's going to have to get some play. Last year's running back draft, 
No, now all of a sudden the Forty Nineers are drafting running back every year. They they weren't doing that before, so now we'll see. Mm-hmm. But we're also over drafting too many linebackers too. So that's another thing I noticed. You <laughs> I pick know, up right? What linebackers are drafting. I'm like, God damn. We must have about like, nine. <laughs> <laughs> At oh, least a solid nine or ten, Rumbo. I feel sorry for those guys because they uh, they got to know they're going to get cut. <sighs> well, Absolutely. I guess you go out there but and if compete. They, if they get I mean, if they get kept, Rumbo, I mean, the forty. Uh, to be honest, the forty nineers go through players like gut, like bullets in a gun. I know. You know? <laughs> It's terrible running back. terrible analogy, something. but still. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about guns <laughs> no. right now. Steve, we've got to go, though, Steve. Oh, we, we ran over time. You take care, well, Rumbo. You too, fam. See, see you Tuesday. See you Tuesday. All right. Looking forward. And, of course, there he is, the spokesperson for the Hornheads. It is not not marketing pro, not ready to go. But Rudy, the originator. Rumble. <laughs> Rumble. Uh, yeah, Rudy. I was just coming back from the Ram second house. Didn't, uh, I just wanted to come in. You just, weren't you just there recently? You go there a lot, well, don't you? I, I'm a dream key holder. So, um, you know, oh, okay. The, Lucky you. Uh, I love this and that, but um, I just happened to heard you guys talking about my guy Stafford maybe not being a Hall of Famer. <laughs> That's the only reason why you're chiming in? He's not, well, Rudy. I wanted, I, I, well, listen, uh, who has more yards and touchdowns than Joe Montana and Steve Young? Matt, Matt Stafford. Stafford. Yeah. Who's going to, in the first game, needs five more yards to be the second to tie Drew Brees for the fastest quarterback to read 50, uh, to uh, pass for 50,000 yards? If I take a wild Matt, guess, Matt Stafford. Matt, who just won a Super Bowl? Matthew Stafford. And he's still going. So he's, he, right now, I'll be with you. You know, Listen, he's got to Rudy, going. Rudy, Rudy, I just want to say one yeah. thing, though. Uh, you know, some of the accumulative stats there for Mr. Stafford have come through years and years of really bad teams where they were throwing the ball for, for, for three quarters uh, week after week because they were coming from behind all day long. So – the people that are making these decisions are also going to keep that in mind as well. If he was in the heat of competition and, and tough battles all the time and was in the fourth quarter mixed to win it, it's another story. But just coming from behind and, and losing 42 to 29, that's not a Hall of Famer. The police must have came and got Rudy. Hope is a 49er fan. <laughs> Cop <laughs> took sorry, his phone. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I just took his Hold phone on, away from him. I'm sorry. <sighs> Rudy, are you on the lamb? Looks like you're running from somebody. <laughs> you, you lost your audio. Rudy, I'm still waiting to hear you. Get, you say something. We, we know you're here. Rudy, who are you watching? Somebody's, got, somebody's trying to get you, aren't they? It's got to be a 40. Okay. Rudy, you're in a, I understand you're in a drive through it looks like. Yeah. I'm sorry, Rambo. No, you're not. I'm ordering. I'm ordering I, okay. What, watch I'm what he says. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Rudy, so, yeah. I just wanted to go in with that, Rambo. And I wanted to let the chat guys remember, especially my guy Tony, that the Rams are the only NFL team to win the Super Bowl and also host the NFC Championship game at the same stadium. I thought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did that the year before. No, they didn't host the championship game. Oh, championship game. Okay. So I just wanted to let the chat know that. And um, so Rudy, that, thank you very that, much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, that that wasn't special. You know, it, it just happened to, because they set up everything at SoFi. And by the way, Rudy, I have a feeling that that was a strategy by the NFL to make sure that happened. You can't figure things out. We can say all kinds of things about them now. Oh, and sorry, furthermore, Rumble. yeah, no, I'm, I'm here, Rambo. Well, you know, it, um, we, we, you know. That win, that Super Bowl win. Yes. Yes. 
uh, that Super Bowl win was an amazing win for us Ram fans. You know, we came back to L.A. Five years later, we're Super Bowl champions, and uh, we're trying to run it back. And meanwhile, the NFC West is in tur turmoil. You know, we don't know if Troy Lan uh, uh, Trey Lance has fatigue in his arm. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> you know, uh, Jimmy G's still there. Um, I'm looking forward to a Rambo. It's going to be a great uh, season. And uh, may the best team win. And uh, I, I, but I, I'm, I, arguably, we're better than we were last year. So, You're right, uh, arguably. We'll Long debate. Yeah. You know, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to Allen Robinson, you know, uh, taking off. You know, they're going to be watching Cooper Cup, and uh, Allen Robinson's going to be singled up. And then you have my guy, Van Jefferson, uh, you know, coming off. Uh, Higby's there. Uh, we're going to have a run game from the beginning to the start. We're going to be explosive. You're going to be covered. To Your secondary is going to be blanketed like I'm talking wintertime blankets. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the 49ers have made some, some changes in that secondary. No more cakewalk, Rudy. No, no, no. You thought he got, you, you thought he got Stafford had problems last year getting picked off. This year, those picks are going to be a reality. Well, that, that was the thing, too. That, that's a misnomer there, Rob, like I told you. He was only four interceptions off of Joe Montana's best year, 31 touchdowns and 13 uh, interceptions. He threw 41 touchdowns and 17 interceptions and Listen, didn't have a running. I, I, so, I got Ambry Thomas. I got Javarius Ward. I got this kid named Womack. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I, I'm, I'm Emmanuel uh, – Emmanuel Mosley, I don't have any weak links back there for you to Stafford to actually be able to uh, just dominate any further. So, Rudy, you go ahead and you guys keep throwing that ball like you did last year, and we will see what happens. I'm looking forward to Robbo. I just want to give you two quick remembrances of that 49ers O line with Mac and Tomlinson in there. And how we were getting in there at the drop of a hat as soon as yeah, that, uh, I Jimmy well Jimmy. I do remember that all too well. Uh, then, yeah, Stafford, how we went right down the field whenever we wanted to at the last ten minutes of the two. Uh, also, that Tennessee game was the biggest uh, comeback of any NFL team. Uh, it was fourteen. It was seventeen to seven in the in the fourth quarter, and Matthew Stafford got us back. So I okay. just want you to. Remember that, yeah, well, I, I no, I, I'm not going to forget that because that's been a problem. But anyway. Uh, well, God bless you, Rambo. I want to. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, get, get, get off. Get off the line. And good night. You're my dude. You're my later it, brother. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Everyone stay safe. And uh, let's get this, let's get this uh, season rolling. And, uh, and we'll see what happens with Rambo. But God bless you. Have a good night. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner, Rudy. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank you, thank you. You notice how he delivers little digs and he's very polite about it. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, man. It's it's Rowan. Hey, Rowan. Rowan Chuck Wilvarty for the next episode. Rowan. Hey, man. How you doing? I don't know I'm doing all right. You know, I, I'm, I'm getting, like, punch drunk from waiting for the season. You know, the things that we have to yeah. talk about before the season starts is a lot of, a lot of madness. <laughs> then I got to put up with, with Rudy calling in and reminding me about things that I really don't care to remember. But, Ron, what, what's on your mind here tonight? I was going over tonight. I was, I, was, I was looking at Frank Gore and his predictions and some of the things he said uh, as to why. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you caught that stuff. What, what are you thinking? You talking about how Frank Gore talked about uh, Jimmy G coming back and 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 predicting that uh, we were still going to the Super Bowl uh, versus the Bills, uh, right, all of against that. the Bills, against yeah. the Bills. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, he, his prediction could be right. He could come back for twenty two. It's unlikely. He could come back. He could be the backup for twenty two. Who knows? But uh, I mean, <laughs> like at this point. Like, obviously, the, the whole talk has been about the arm fitness of Trey Lance. And I'll see this, <laughs> uh, sp right? Yeah, put some light on that. Because I when I see yeah. those kind of articles, I just chuckle. I didn't even read yeah. it. I've just been listening to what everybody exactly. else has been saying. Yeah. And, I mean, like, 
I'll, I'll, I'll say this with like uh, a silver line, right? The arm fitness stuff could very well be true last year based solely on the delivery of freelance. Uh, Jack Hammer put out a good comment. After training camp, you don't know. Um, you know like uh, the, we media members cannot see the majority of practices. So you don't know who's practicing. You don't know for what duration they're practicing and all that. And so the arm fitness could have been like now several sources have reported it. Right. Uh, I know Matt Mayoko shed uh, a bit of light on it. Although really? he also said that it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, obviously we heard Mike Silver talk about it earlier in the off season. We heard Ryan Harris talk about it. Right. Uh, or not arm fitness, but arm fatigue. Arm right? fatigue. And so, and so here's what I'll say. I think it could have been true. But last off se- or last season during the entire year, Trey Lance also suffered from the finger injury. And Trey Lance, uh, that injury hampered him throughout the entire course of the season. And I know that Trey Lance missed days of practice because of that injury. And so maybe these two things have interlapped and it's been portrayed to be worse than it actually is. But what I do know is 49ers have four media practices this offseason. Trey Lance has participated in all of them. And mm-hmm. the 49ers have also had back-to-backs this offseason with their OTA program. The 23rd and the 24th of May, that was the mm-hmm. first two days of the offseason program, back-to-back. I know uh, at one other stretch, they also had a back-to-back uh, in terms of practice. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure from what I've heard that Trey Lance has been uh, active at all of these practices. So I don't know if the problem is carried over. Then again, we only will really get to see if he plays in true game action. At this point, I'm not worried until we see true game action. Because in the game that we did see Trey Lance in week 16, if this arm fatigue issue was was seriously an issue, it wasn't shown then, right? He threw 23 times. He threw the ball accurately. Over 66% of his passes were completed. And he also threw at a high pace. 10.8 10.8 yards per attempt. So really he checked all the boxes in a start very late in the season when so-called arm fatigue should be affecting you at the most. So to me, I think it was probably more of an overlap with the finger injury, although I'm not going to dispute it and say this is completely out of the loop because several people do have sources up high. And I do think that it could have been an issue if multiple people are reporting it, especially when Matt Mayoko touched on it. Yeah. You know, you're right, especially Matt. Everybody else, you, you, you can maybe take it seriously or not, but Matt Mayoko doesn't like to get involved in things that he's going to be checked on later. He's pretty good about that. Right, right, exactly. And, I mean, when you talk also just about the, the Lance and Jimmy G talk, right, I think mm-hmm. obviously it's the dead part of the season right now. Many – outside of the 49ers uh, organization and really fans and media don't understand that Jimmy Garoppolo is solely on the roster because he just can't pass a physical right now. And the 49ers <laughs> stand to lose seven and a half million dollars if he does. So to mm. me, and like Jimmy, the Jimmy Garoppolo saga, I don't think uh, like we don't really know what's happening, but also I don't think it's really that realistic that he remains on the roster for now. I don't know whether he gets traded. I think the the trade uh, rumors uh, about him to the Buccaneers, I would be very, very shocked if there was a trade. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo should not be a Buccaneer. He just doesn't fit what they do. Byron Leftwich runs an air raid system, not an, like mm. a full air raid system like uh, Cliff Kingsbury, but he runs a system that is predicated on deep passing. Tom Brady was one of the better deep passers last year, and that's the main reason why back – in March, when I was uh, scouting for teams that Jim Garoppolo could be traded to, I put Tampa Bay on the list of do not trade to. He's just the worst scheme fit possible uh, for Tampa Bay. I don't think that that would work, that relationship there, in f- uh, for what Tampa Bay wants to do. Like, don't even look at Tom Brady, right? Who was the guy before Tom Brady? It was James Winston for a year uh, under yeah. this Arians left which regime. And he was one of the better deep passers as well. He also threw a lot of interceptions, but he mm-hmm. aired it out for 5,000 yards, right? And so I don't just don't think Jimmy Garoppolo uh, fits their scheme. I don't think that they're a realistic trade candidate. But then again, the 49ers, $24.2 million non-guaranteed salary. So Mm. they can do what they want with that. But also, they've shown that they can budget that contract 
into their current standing, right? Mm. Like, I think they can go into the season right now extending Debo Samuel and keeping mm. Jimmy Garoppolo and be fine with the cap. Now, do mm. I think that that's the most effective way to use your cap space? No, because you're essentially uh, hurting yourself by not using the or by not using the twenty four point two million elsewhere, or not carrying it over next offseason when you have several key free agents to attend to, like Jimmy Ward, and also you have a uh, like the TV deal should hit in, so you might have an. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Space. Didn't that didn't that TV deal kick in next year? Exactly. So you might have an influx of cap space to really make your roster really good in 2023. If you're looking to make a lot of deals. I, the 49ers, exactly. I think, with, with the 49ers have drafted really well, Rowan. They're probably not, and, 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 and they seem to be, and this goes back even before Kyle got here, the 49ers have never been crazy about bringing in a lot of free agents. I mean, because right. the philosophy being that you always overpay for free agents. I, I think that's, that's true. Yeah. But also in that case, like I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of people say the Fulmy Enters don't make moves. And I'm against that because we've just seen them make moves. It's just they, they haven't made the moves that people like or the mm. moves haven't panned out when they like them. Right. Look mm. at Kyle, uh, Quan Alexander, five years, 81.25 million <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. He's now like we're taking on his dead cap right for the past two years because we cut him. Weston yeah. Richford, five years, forty-seven point five million. Injury back in twenty nineteen mm. cost him his entire career. He doesn't play with us. D Ford, five years, eighty-seven point five uh, million. He's played see, very minimally in, and, in and all those snake bites are probably one of the reasons why the 49ers would probably like to continue raising their own stuff. I don't know. Right. We'll, we'll see. Right. But that also means re-signing your all like your current players, now that's like the Emmanuel thing. Mosley, yeah. Jimmy Ward, and people like that. And it also does mean the occasional splash, right? Like the 49ers had an issue in the secondary last year, playing guys like Josh Norman, playing mm-hmm. guys like uh other, like guys like Drake or Patrick at times, or even Darkies Denard, who's playing right now uh, mm-hmm. in the slot. And what do they do about that? They sign Traverse Ward to the second highest deal in the entirety of free agency at cornerback. So they're not, hopefully it's not like they're not willing to spend. It just depends on the players. And I think next year's free agency is still going to be such a big pool of players. Given mm. the amount of players that have chosen to sign one year deals, not only this year, but also last year, like short term deals because of COVID. And I think mm. next year is the year where it finally resets, where you'll see so many more long term deals. Could, could be. Ron, wait, we're gonna, I got to get late. I didn't realize how late it was. I'll tell you what, <laughs> what I say. I'm a, let me, oh, great to hear from you. Uh, and loving your stuff. He's Rowan Chakravarthy. You will see his articles on 49ers' website. And Rowan's always, I always call him the fans thinking man writer. <laughs> you do a great job, Rowan. I'll see you I'll be, I'll be back you. Tuesday looking for you. All right. All right. I'll see you, man. All right. Night, Rowan. And uh, all right. So, anyway, as I said, it's getting late. I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll pass it out here. Rudy actually. Killed me. <laughs> Dude's ordering his food and talking trash. God, Rudy, that was uncalled for. But anyway, fam, I'm, I'm thinking, I might, I might, let's get back here Tuesday. Yeah, let's see. This. Hopefully, some. You know what? Here's the thing. If nothing's going on, then anything just it just involves Jimmy. <laughs> Probably will wait till Wednesday. Anyway, have a great night. And hey, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Thanks for the contributions. And subscribe so I can find you when we get started. Niners! Yes.